And one, two, three, and we're back in the. <laughs> you already had it live. Yes, we're back into magical world of YouTube again. Thanks everyone for showing up on time like us. <laughs> time. Yes, we got very special guests today in the house, and you probably haven't seen John and Jenna for a while. <laughs> and you missed them. <laughs> At least 24 hours. Yeah. Yes, you missed them so much already. You haven't seen them for, for so long. <laughs> So, guys, we got John and Jenna in the house. They're flipping in easy. I'll put their channel in the description in the chat. Please subscribe. Hit the like button on all their lives, guys. Don't forget to get a sale. Also, <laughs> make sure to follow them on Instagram, guys. I'll put all the links. And uh, I really appreciate John and Jenna to actually, um, with my invitation to join our live, our debacle that nobody watches. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Yes. we're> <laughs> We're kind of safe. So, John and Jenna, guys, don't worry about any type of negativity today because nobody watches this life anyway. <laughs> I think, you know, we can be really relaxed now. <laughs> yeah, so please feel relaxed and welcome in our great YouTube world of uh, my and Lisa's. Mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> guys, actually, I wanted to say something. I forgot my doctor, my eye doctor told Here me I have to put my eclipse glasses on, guys, because he said that I was watching... <laughs> I was looking at the sun for too long on Monday. <laughs> so guys, he said not to remove them today. Oh, so I'm not gonna oh, read any comments. Are those, <laughs> aren't those the the 3D? No, I don't know what they no, are. They're they're are. If you're staring at the sun, you need Stevie Wonder's glasses. This is actually, guys, I can tell you one thing. I was surprised how good they are. When I was looking at the sky, the only thing I saw was actually the sun covered with the moon. That's it. No, no one else. Well, guys, I would say if you if you're a husband or a wife and you don't want to see your better half like throughout the day, just wear the glasses like that throughout the day, and you're not gonna see them. <laughs> so that, you're not gonna see anything except sun, guys, outside. So that's a good thing. So, guys, anyway, we're gonna get a little bit serious today because John and Jenna, actually, guys, if you know and watch their live for a while actually bring a lot of education to the youtube community compared to me it's like uh like day and night guys so it's like very important guys that uh hopefully everyone will learn something today i will learn something even though it's hard for me to learn anything but i'll try and hopefully john and jenna will speak today more than i do so i'm not gonna even try to talk too much guys because I show I actually know that they actually have much more knowledge than me, guys. Believe me, yeah. and uh, it's very it's very That's important. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, guys, uh, John and Jenna, if guys, by the way, uh, just to remind everyone, John and Jenna go live each every Monday and Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern time and 3 p.m. Pacific time. So, yeah. see, guys, I actually was uh, kind of. I originally thought that I make I will make a mistake on time, but thankfully I didn't because I slept for an hour. So that's uh, <laughs> my brain kind of started working again, which is rare. <laughs> I had to recharge it. Yeah, I had to recharge my brain, guys, because it usually takes me after I wake up, it takes me whole day to come back together, like to life. <laughs> so let's say hello to everyone who is in the chat. And then we'll introduce John and Jenna. They will introduce themselves if you haven't seen them for a long time. <laughs> Just to make sure we got doing it wrong in the house. Uh, we got Gino in the house. Gino's fine. Uh, you made 1,000 subs. Congrats. Can I borrow some money? Gino, I will need to borrow your money, man. <laughs> 1,000 subs, Gino, as you know, it's going to take me about probably 25 years to make 10 cents. So, <laughs> unfortunately, I will have to go back to driving Uber again. <laughs> we got little Debbie in the house. Little Debbie, welcome. Nicole Lopresto from our beautiful Marco Polo group in the house. Nicole, welcome. Maya, welcome. Maya Koyama actually came to, my, to our live from John and Jenna. So, guys, appreciate for actually giving us more subscribers. John and Jenna <laughs> gave us so many shout outs. That I finally gained two subscribers, guys. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it, guys. We got Chad in the house, Wolfman's goodies, howdy guys and girls, and everyone else. Uh, we got Lucky 19 Tease, Michelle in the house from Strongsville here, Bearded Pocket Tuber Matt, Marie. Hello, everyone. 
Um, Maya Koyama saying, John may actually be able to outtalk Roman, which is true. <laughs> Which is, actually, which is actually this. absolutely true. We got kiss in the house, vintage sports flips, prickly pair 27. Welcome. Hello, everyone, guys. Welcome on this beautiful, finally beautiful Saturday night here in Cleveland. We got sunny skies yeah. and 60 yeah. degrees. After after yeah. almost five days of rain, non-stop, guys. So finally oh. the sun, sun came out and it became a little bit warmer today. So we're back into spring for a day. <laughs> it's outstanding. Yeah, today was a beautiful day. Yeah, we went out yard sailing. So that's great. And we're gonna talk about it, guys. You're gonna tell everyone because I'm not gonna talk too much. Like Tommy Bernard told me in advance, he said, Don't talk a lot, let John and Jenna speak. So we got <laughs> it's escape promo in the house. Ken, the OG saying hello, everyone. Evening, everyone. And here's Tommy, famous Tommy Bernard in the house, guys. I upgraded my YouTube translator to USA Red. Just for this. <laughs> <laughs> guys, as you know, Tommy Bernard actually is uh, apparently he told me when I did my list of the best YouTubers and resellers when I did it last time, like I think last year, he told me uh, on Instagram that he considers to be uh, like uh, number one. So uh -huh. we actually have to kind of respect his wish, guys. So we're going to make Tommy number one today, guys. He's kind of like he's talking about coming back, and and he's thinking about coming back. Yeah, Tommy said wow. that hopefully if Tracy will come back because not a lot of people, guys, to tell you the truth, wanted to watch Tommy by himself. They wanted to watch him with beautiful women, but uh, he cannot ask his wife, so he had to ask other women, guys. So there you go. <laughs> Tommy would like to see himself with beautiful women. <laughs> Exactly. Dollar Bill Brown in the house. <laughs> you guys, guys, your primary example of an amazing couple that does uh, like work together amazingly. You guys, like every time I watch you, it's just how you like do life with each other and work with each other in the reselling business. That's prime example of married couples or uh, boyfriends, girlfriends. I would not go as far as, far as that. But you guys actually <laughs> like a perfect example. When well, this, thank when you. this happens, not, guys, it's always easy. You, you gotta you gotta see the behind the scenes though. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I know behind the scenes is kind of harsh. <laughs> That's the most peaceful time going to yard sales because she wouldn't get up. Mm -hmm. I brought my carload of stuff here two hours in. There's so many yard sales. I mean, people would die for the yard sales we have out here. Every community, I mean, at least 20 communities had uh, a yard sale today, and I had to, to come home, bring stuff home. I figured, okay, I'm going to get Jenna to come come with me on the second go around. And what? Can I say it? What a mistake! <laughs> only because, only because. Pinch him under the day. I Wait, think I think Jenna was not the best. You're going to pass. <laughs> Don't turn like that. It's like, geez, man, I, I was driving like this earlier. I had nobody yelling at me. <laughs> yeah. Jenna, oh, did that you, marital look we know well. Jenna, did you yell at John today? Tell us the truth. Yes, I did because did. he was driving. Like, he was stopping in the middle of the road where there's people <laughs> driving by there on a main road. You know, you just don't stop in the middle of the road to look for a yard sale sign, dude. Like, honestly. Uh, Jenna, I actually can tell you the truth. I do the same thing all the time. And yeah, uh, unfortunately, I and, I, and sometimes I drive from both lanes. That yes. actually makes it even more funnier. <laughs> it was very erratically. And I have PTSD. And so I, I the car rides can be a little rough for me at times. And today he was on another level. And I was like, okay, dude, I just want so to many yard sales, so little time. So I had to, we did I, a lot of drive bys. Yes. <laughs> wow. That's a, that sounds like an exciting time, but at least you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully, both of you went at yeah. the same well, time. Eventually. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> Calm down. We're good. Yeah. Um, so Tommy is saying, remember rap battles back in the day? We need John John and Roman Mono monologue battle. I don't oh, know, John. John is actually really good at monologues, think, guys, in the beginning I think of the life. Be really good at a at a rap battle. Yeah, you, you have to if you're gonna do that, the monologue has to rhyme. Yeah, I don't know, guys. It's not gonna work with me that much, believe me. John, John can do that for sure. With me, guys, I have to get ready. It's gonna take me a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> you have to prepare. 
Uh, we got Thrifty Mom in the house. Kristen, who will be guest next week, guys, by the way. I will oh, make an nice. announcement advertising for Kristen, uh, Thrifty Mom. So, Kristen, welcome. We got Good Water Pickers in the house. Welcome. We got Little Debbie already said, Gino, hey, Lisa, Andy Sometta in the house. Your mm-hmm. guest is on time. <laughs> almost, almost, almost worked okay yeah G- uh, andy welcome yeah andy was also on time guys it just he told me that i need to start the live without him for like two hours and then he'll join <laughs> 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 which basically what happened but andy was actually on time on this live guys you cannot be not on time usually because we go live and uh we're gonna have a guest anyway it doesn't matter guys as you know <laughs> Even if we don't, guys, I will speak maybe for an hour. (laughs) So, guys, uh, tell everyone about yourselves, because I think people already forgot, most likely, from all the lives that you have done throughout the years, (laughs) how you started out your journey uh, in terms of not just reselling. What kind of uh, jobs did you have originally before you went into reselling? What what kind of um, uh, things you've done before, like... uh, all, like together before you started reselling how did you meet all that stuff so everyone will kind of have some kind of background of you guys well uh i've been reselling since like 2002 and it started off selling going to a computer uh, computer swap meet they have like every week and i'd buy different computer components and i would bring them home and list them sell them on on ebay as a part-time gig and um, that was a supplement my income that I had from working at Amtrak, uh, the call center. And then we, uh, I met her there. Um, we basically, I worked there for 26 years. She worked there for like 14 or 15. 15. And uh, about, was it the end of 2018, they came to us and said, uh, we're closing the office. There's two call, we, we worked at a call center at, at the railroad and uh in california California. we're going to close the office you can either um for me step down from management i had my own department i was running and uh exercise your seniority go to to the philadelphia call center where we knew nobody had no family other than the co-workers that would have been moving or take the severance package and it was like well we were already selling part-time and we, we figured you know what we'll just do it and so we did. So we got our severance package. We figured that doing business in California probably wasn't the best idea. So we moved out to Las Vegas and uh, we've been doing the full-time gig ever since. And uh, about 2020, a year into going full-time, we made we created the channel Flippin' Ain't Easy uh, to just kind of go over the things that I was dealing with uh, as a reseller. My background is sort of learning policy and helping people. And that part of my life was no longer there. So that YouTube sort of took on that role. And then she, uh, I had to drag her onto the live stream. And I'm just here for the ride. Yeah, I had to drag her (laughs) onto the live stream because she didn't want to be at all on camera. And uh, so that's sort of uh, where we're at. Interesting. So Jenna, you didn't want to be on the camera at the beginning? No, but no, you're no. so beautiful. You she make still does. Look good. Thank you, thank you. But I'm not. I can. I'm do. I do better in a social setting when there's actual people here, and and so it gets very. I get very quiet and to myself, and then I like close up, and so it's it's very awkward for me, and I look like a fish out of water. So I'd rather, you know. I'll sit with you because I can see him and talk to him. And so it, it's different doing it that way for me. So, yeah, last year I talked her into doing the live while I was gone oh, God. on a Friday. Mm-hmm. And I thought she did okay. And I but she she did I'll never do yeah, that again. Good. Maybe, but it was just uncomfortable. And I don't, I mean, we on our channel, we tell people to, you know, you have to get uncomfortable all the time yeah. however it's an uncomfortable that i don't i don't want to have to feel if i don't have to and so um yeah i don't think that's a, a thing this year <laughs> i can i can tell you Jenna, that not a lot of wives want to be involved even with their uh husbands like business whatsoever like you know yeah. it's like it's a uh, situations where 
it's kind of rare in my opinion like you know you can see it in the youtube community world situations where husband and wife teams work together and not like in terms of like doing lives together but just uh, on a reselling but right. you guys have done lives together already for a while and i think in my opinion uh you've done great job you kind of complete each other with different things like john will read certain comments and you will point out certain comments that kind of helps because you get a lot of people in your chats so mm -hmm. that's actually helpful and you provide good stuff uh, john actually knows uh what he's talking about that's why i love you sometimes <laughs> sometimes but I love, I love that i love the transparency and i love uh, the videos that john puts out and like you know uh there is like in my opinion there is no like some kind of i would say bullshit that's not true that john will actually speak about in the videos and when you guys do the lives i mean it's always something important in my opinion and uh that's why it's a uh, good you're a good uh couple uh just uh for everything like you know i know working together is difficult sometimes behind the scenes it happens with all the husbands and wives teams that's yes. kind of, yeah that's I mean, we, we <laughs> definitely have to take time away from each other you know mm -hmm. so it's it, you get to a point where you're, you know, you're bickering so much. It's like, okay, I'm going for a trip to California. I'll be back, in, you know, in two days, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. I mean, it, it can be very monotonous doing it over and over every single day. However, you know, I don't, I couldn't, I couldn't do this with anybody else. So we get, I mean, we may not seem like it, but we get along um, in our own way, I guess. Right. So she understands me, I understand her, and that's why it works because you know uh, we can we can tolerate each other, right? And so that's uh, that's well, the thing. Find someone you can tell, tolerate. Tell everybody how long you've been together. I mean, we will well, be celebrating our 10, 11. 13th wedding anniversary in um, September, but we've been together for fifteen years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's nice. We met, it, we met at Amtrak, and we've been together ever since. I mean, yeah. of course, we are both previously married, so he has three children. Um, three adults now. Three adult children. I have one adult child, and so together, obviously, we have four, but we have five beautiful granddaughters that are our whole world, and <laughs> um, so... You know, it, it, it definitely, you know, the, the whole saying when two people fall in love, it makes a family. So it worked out in our favor. Yeah, and we, we, we juggle the whole reselling YouTube thing with family and friends, most of them from California. So that's why we're always like taking time away when we can, not too, too much, but like a weekend here, a weekend there, we try. Yeah, it's a bit. You guys both have big families already, so it yeah. kind of yeah. creates creates this kind of uh, environment, which is basically, in my opinion, great for everything. Like uh, you know, when you travel together, see the kids, grandkids. Grandkids are always exciting. That's oh, okay. they are my absolute everything. Um, the, the, we have five girls, and they are a handful, but I wouldn't want it any other way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what did you just sell? What'd you sell? A swimsuit uh -oh. for fifty-four dollars. Right. It's the time. All right. I got a bunch of water shoes. I need to a get a size out. twenty swimsuit. So, oh, go, that's... girl. <laughs> you go. Okay. It's you. Shout out to the big girls. Swimsuit for you. Swimsuit. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't have any panties, but to go with the size twenty swimsuit, you know somebody that does. Yeah, yeah, guys, it's only nine, uh, eight, eight twenty, and Lisa is already talking about no panties. So <laughs> that's a bit. My life. It's only eight twenty on the east coast. <laughs> you must have spelled a three piece. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, actually, you know the thing is about pennies. Not a lot of women wear pennies nowadays, anyway. So, a kind of uh, one of the sorry, uh, sorry for the women. <laughs> sorry, y'all start talking. Get him off of this. Way, way too early. Too it's early, too early, guys. Girl. We actually, we kind of wanna. Know, guys, we have to be respectful to John and Jenna, guys. 
Guys, we have to be respectful to John and Jenna because they actually have very good life compared to our debacles that talks about women without penis, guys. You no, see this, that? this is right up our alley. You have no idea. Don't have any idea. We can be very disturbed at times. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of a disturbing situation, guys, for all of us. <laughs> But uh, Tommy, yes, Tommy Bernard is saying in the comment as you see on the screen right now, he says not a chance. <laughs> not a chance that Tommy can work with his wife, guys. He's, he's talking about I'll be doing life 100%. <laughs> Yo, you 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 play with Roman, man. I don't <laughs> Yes, it's too early to play right now, believe me. <laughs> the, way, <laughs> the, way, the way I go, when I go to the beans, guys, that's kind of where I play. But after the beans, I cannot play anymore that much. Because oh. my attention my attention completely goes away entirely. So I have to concentrate on, you know, reselling subjects you compared to, to something that has to do with some kind of garment <laughs> or, or penis or some kind of like closing <laughs> so it's kind of important guys so we don't get off the subject but see one of the things that tommy brought out actually said that he cannot work with his wife so now we know why we haven't seen tommy's wife in his life like uh, same thing with me guys <laughs> that's very understandable most people can't and wouldn't and so it's it's a rarity it's you know especially working from home. I mean, we worked at Amtrak together, but we worked in completely different departments. And so we hardly even saw each other throughout the day. So we were working different shifts. It was, you know, we we never saw each other. It was like we were working at two separate places. But when you're working together at home every day, every hour, every minute, it can it can be very tough. <laughs> I, I actually kind of surprised that you actually brought that up because you guys worked together already for a certain amount of years at Amtrak. So yeah. it's kind of husband. And, I mean, that, that's actually also why you guys are actually doing it together right now because you already kind of got used to this type of thing. Right. So oh, yeah. Like you've been working together for a while before, and now you work again together again. And I had a friend that used to work with his wife back uh, when I used to work in a computer company. And he, he couldn't work with his wife, even though they worked at the same place. But he was always trying to, like, run away from her. <laughs> he, would, like, he would, like, come out outside on the break to smoke. And, like, his wife would get up. She would not let him smoke. So she would come out and start screaming at him in Russian. And he's like... Uh, stop it like uh, go away <laughs> he would like start bitching at her <laughs> to leave him alone <laughs> yeah we didn't we never i mean it we had to make it a point to see each other we worked in a very large building and it had different quads and so we worked in separate quads so therefore we hard we had to if we wanted to go see each other or ask some each other a question usually which was very rare you know we'd have to go to each other's desks which was somewhere else in the office yeah. so but then when i when i got into management i really couldn't really interact with her because it gave the appearance of you know oh well you know she's not management he's management and yeah i tried to distance myself while at work because yeah. of that so, yeah oh, we wow that's with interesting each other for her. Uh, on on purpose because of the fact that we didn't want you know we had a lot of freaking trolls at our office and so we we just purposely didn't communicate or be seen together at work because of you know pe people like to talk and you know i'm not down with all the bs so <laughs> that is actually uh, and john also it's kind of brings a good point if she was a manager she could have fired you <laughs> from your job well, it's, it's, it's just the appearance like other other employees would be like well you know you give her preferential treatment you're always talking to her you're you know like it's like i'm not going to be in, in that conversation we so. also worked in different totally different departments you know i was in one department he was in another there was at one point where we did work in the same quad but we did not talk on purpose because of the fact that we were so close together, um, but we were in separate departments. So it made it easier 
you know, I didn't have to go to him. He didn't have to come to me. We, we stayed away on purpose. Yeah. Sometimes it helps because like in those situations, uh, all the employees will not kind of try to go around and try to kind of, you know, backstab you in those situations, because I've seen that happen a lot before while working at different corporate environments where employees try to go to their boss and kiss his ass and (laughs) tell tell on other people that they don't do their job properly. And I ran into that. I never done it. I have said this is the worst you can do to some employees that you go to your boss and try to kind of rat people out. It's just like turned me off those people right away. I would not talk to them. I would not respect them anymore because they're kind of big like rats right away. They will rat people out to just get ahead in the company. You know, right. so they will try to kiss their boss ass, go around, help him out with stuff that he doesn't even ask and or she. So like that's the thing about it. So I don't like those types of people. And uh, in the YouTube, uh, you know, there is uh, also like there is uh, what I was telling you about is that I loved right away when I saw John's first uh, videos, even without even like knowing about lives. I mean, I I knew right away by his personality how he is. Like I had to watch, of course, exactly some videos to make sure, you know. But yeah, I actually, really you know, just you know, kind of sometimes you watch certain channels, you will right away tell what kind of person it is. But yeah. when I watch uh, from my point of view, of course. Uh, don't get me wrong, guys. I know everyone has their own point of views. So from my point of view is that I kind of knew right away uh, after watching certain, like some amount of videos that John put out that uh, he's a guy that knows what he's talking about. So that's actually something that will help uh, in the reselling community, whoever is trying to kind of learn something, you know, instead of uh, watching some kind of garbage and uh, not knowing exactly. <laughs> not knowing exactly what the hell they're doing you know so that's actually very respectful in, in my opinion so that's why i like the channels that uh from my point of view that i watch myself and i can tell how people are if they're chasing certain thing in their youtube journey or they're ch- trying to actually help people out you know right yeah so right. that's important that, for was, me. that was why the the channel became what it what it is is we couldn't find anybody in the same reselling space that we could relate to and we were getting so many mixed answers on things that we had questions on and we would try it the one way that so and so you know would say oh we you try it this way do it this way or change whatever and it wouldn't work for us and we're like well that didn't work so we try to find somebody else that we could relate to and get another point of view and we couldn't find that and at the time there wasn't uh, an abundance of reseller youtube channels at the time and it was very limited and we didn't trust the ones that we saw so we were like well you know let's go for it and Well, and I found him, well, you guys, but John, when you guys first started out, and I was really impressed that I I don't even remember what it was. I I reached out to him and he answered me back really promptly, was real concise and was even like, you know, does that work or what, you know, and asked what I thought. And I was like, this is a real person. They're not full of crap like some of them. You know what? One of the large YouTubers that, um, Initially, I watched a lot, and I think this person changed over time. I'm not going to say who they are, uh, but they're by the water. They used to be by the water, and um, that's the clue. Uh, yeah. They changed a lot in who they were, and I reached out to them when I when we first went full time, and he was like, he wanted people to reach out. You know, if you got a question, so like, fine, I reached out, no answer. I'm like, okay, and then later, like months down the road, he did it again. So all right, I'll reach out again. No answer. So it's like, okay, uh, that resonated with me. And it's like, you know, I try to get back to every, I mean, I get back to that same day, but I try to get back to anyone who ever emails me and says, Hey, you know, I have a question or I got this going on. I got people sending me messages on Instagram and it's cool. I'm cool with it. You know, um, uh, I'm just a person. I ain't nobody special. That's the way I look at it. And, and if that person's going to take time to reach out to me, the least I can do is to at least answer and try to help when I can, you know? 
yeah that's great man that's why it's that's what it is it takes so so like so, like little things sometimes uh, just show what kind of person it, it is you know like you know if the person doesn't respond or because you have certain amount of subscribers or like if you just don't even have a youtube channel like uh, sometimes the person will respond and say sorry i'm busy right now i will get back to you later but some mm -hmm. people don't even respond at all so that shows that just disrespectful you know or they right. sometimes you know will claim i forgot and stuff like that so you know it is what it is but it happens not just in the youtube reselling world it happens in all types of businesses yeah. so yeah. That, yeah. but that person that responding to you and your messages either in their videos or um the direct email or message on instagram how well are they doing with their customers that are sending them messages that kind of was like am i am i gonna listen to what this person has to say mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of like you said earlier there's a lot of things you can look for uh within their comment and how they do business um to determine well i don't know if i want to follow that person you know there's yeah. a lot of a lot of youtubers out there and you see it behind the scenes like we went to that event right you get to see people up close and personal and you kind of get a, a good sense of who's on their game and who's not and who's faking it until they make it and who's not yeah, who's in it for the YouTube money or who's in it for the eBay money or reselling money? Reselling, yeah. You know, and you figure out who is who. And it, you know, I'm I'm a pretty good judge of character. And if I get a gut feeling that you're rubbing me the wrong way, my gut is never wrong. And you know, I'll I'll step away. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Let me say hello to some people. See, that's me with unprofessionalism again. Mike in the house, parts of Jack, Mike, welcome. A beautiful Angie in the house from our Marco Polo group. I spoke to Angie, I speak to Angie almost every day. They hear me every day because we're in the same Marco Polo group. And I usually um, record videos for like two hours. So they actually kind of try to skip me. <laughs> What's Is it like a swimming swimming group? Uh, no, it's like a, it's like a, yeah, it's a swimming pool, guys, for uh, just a water polo. <laughs> we, we swim for the longest time, I didn't know either. I was I like, I could be rolling, going to a swim, uh, like to the YMCA, playing uh, Marco Polo with like strangers. I could see him doing that. <laughs> it's a hide and seek. It's a hide and seek game. Be it's, down, it's a hide and seek game, and we play without any clothing. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> Here we go again, guys. So Angie in the house finally made it in our power went out. Angie, welcome. Uh Maya Koyama saying nice what brand? I'm not sure exactly. Maybe I, oh, I, I missed that. Oh, uh uh simply Shana in the shenanigan, Shana in the house. Shana, welcome. We got Bema, Bema J Bird Trisel Josh in the Josh. house. What's up, friends? Great to see you all tonight. By the way, guys, Brian, dollar bills you all in the house, too. He was in Cleveland. And Brian, if you're still here, man, appreciate that you actually drove here from Pennsylvania, man, to go to the bins with me last week. Oh, cool. And to feed you. And to feed you really and good. And, and uh, Brian bought me dinner because I actually we were... I saw that video. <laughs> yeah, I, I, went, I went live from uh, one of the places here. We went eating and... Uh, Brian, actually, it was nice of him. Appreciated Brian to spend money on me, man. It was Aww. really nice of you. Brian paid for my dinner, guys. He said, yeah. "I'm not gonna take your rubles." <laughs> 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 Soviet. He said, "Soviet rubles don't work in this country." <laughs> What's the exchange for dinner? <laughs> but uh, we had great time, guys. Brian is a great guy, by the way. If you guys sometimes meet some people that you don't see on YouTube, by the way, Brian is a really nice guy. And uh, it was really nice of him, like I said, to just drive here to spend time with someone like me, who is like very uh, kind of uh, all over the place person, unstable, <laughs> without <laughs> knowing what to do. So Brian appreciated well, but we had fun. I mean, it was exciting. Guys, if you're welcome. If you want to stop by in Cleveland, reach out. We can go to the beans. We can go eat uh, and you will have to pay for me. <laughs> right. I'm not surprised because Roman, you are a very amazing man. I have to say, we spent yes. time in Cincinnati together. We sat at the same table. We got to know each other a little more, and you know, you, your heart is. Now we'll so have to wear glasses. 
<laughs> He's about to cry. He's gonna make me cry. I'm gonna start crying. You, you all... really, you really, you know, tugged on my heartstrings. So you, you definitely, you're a, you're a very good man, you know. And regardless of how unprofessional you think it might be, I think that you're really, you're fun to be around. You are very dedicated to your business, and and I think that's really cool. Yeah, I'm trying to be dedicated to reselling more than YouTube right now, at least, because I, I make money from reselling. Unfortunately, don't have the kind of uh, help, like sometimes, like, you know, my wife will help a little bit, but not like uh, a lot, you know, a lot yeah. of mistakes, a lot of stuff. I'm kind of more calm because I usually I work in the management uh, before when I used to work in the computer companies and uh, it was my job to train employees. And yeah. like I, sometimes I would, you know, it would be difficult for me because it's tough, but I would kind of keep myself together to try to explain as much as I could. So they learn. And, uh, you know, eventually, like when you are uh, trying to teach your employees, uh, like not employees, but people at the company to do something, it's completely different compared to when you teach your wife. It's like, mm -hmm. it's uh, much for me, it's more complicated because like, you know, uh, I don't want to scream at her you know and uh yeah. kind of when she makes certain mistakes i, I kind of leave you know for yeah. a little bit so i don't scream too much so but then i take everything and do it myself because i know like you know i'll do like what i want to do that's why it's important for me to do the way i i try to do it because it's hard for me you know because there were so many different instances where she was making a lot of different mistakes and uh, it was like uh kind of breaking me up and i couldn't do it anymore you know yeah so yeah, I mean, there's there's Six times happens. that's how you learn. Though. There are times where you know I have to ask John questions, you know, and I don't retain the information quite well, and um, I'll have to ask him again. And he's like, "Dude, I just told you last week," and so you know it <laughs> it can it can be frustrating at times, but we just work through it. So. Yeah, and you guys done amazing job, and also doing lives like the like you guys are doing, it's great. That's why kind of all all the time you guys, Mondays and Fridays you're together doing the lives, and you work together all the time in reselling. So that's actually kind of uh, you kind of go around doing things, and that's how you will become uh, in already kind of a powerful reselling couple, in my opinion, on uh, in the YouTube magical world. So like you know, in my opinion, that. <laughs> Roman, uh, Chad Wolfman's goodies uh, threw us some stripper cash. Chad, appreciate oh, oh. it, man. Yeah, Chad he actually. Uh -oh. Chad, yes. Chad, Chad actually amazing. Chad, appreciate it, man. Shout out, Melissa is the coolest wife ever. That's oh. actually that's actually Chad's wife. Yeah. Uh, he okay. actually asked me to shout out his wife. Melissa is the coolest wife ever. See there you go. Oh, okay. that's so cool. And now I have to wear my glasses again. <laughs> on the living room floor listening. Did he lose a bet? Was... Did he lose a bet when he had to send it out loud? I, I'm not sure. Maybe uh, uh, Chad, uh, is your wife beating you up, man? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> is that Chad, a raise... cry, cry for help? Chad, Chad, raise the flag, man. Just raise the white flag and just tell her you're giving up, man. That's it. Uh, don't let her beat you up, man. Get out of that funk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm um, again disregarding the chat. Again, very unprofessional. We got Jennifer Hess in the house. Jennifer, welcome. And I, th I think I told yeah, Josh Bama J Bird Resale was actually a guest on John and Jenna's life, like me, guys. So Josh actually was on their life as a guest. I think probably a couple months ago, if you guys remember. But it was a great life, also, as all, all the other lives. So Josh, appreciate it, man, stopping by. Uh, Andy Sometha saying, "Yeah, I don't want to hear my wife talk about my business so the same way. I can't pretend to be a doctor." <laughs> <laughs> see, that, see, there you go, guys. See, that's true, Andy. That's true, man. Sometimes it depends. Not all wives want to be in this kind of business. They are trying to help, but uh, it, it, it sometimes it may work, sometimes it can't. So you just just live with it, guys. You know, it is what it is uh red sock if you ever have to climb corporate again always ask your boss opinion because they're successful exactly yeah that's actually true 
I'm not, yeah, I'm not about like, one of my best friends is actually he was uh the one of the four managers uh in the office above us, right? So um I was able to go to him a lot and you know pick his brain. Yeah, the different man like as like for me, for example, I have I used to work for a guy who was younger than me, and uh he actually was not a I would say a smart dude, like he kind of started his business when he was like 17 and he climbed like really fast in uh, just his own business by himself. And then eventually money changed him. Like, you know, sometimes you start to make money and yeah. you, as more money as you will have, you, it, some people don't change, but he yeah. changed big time. He started to disrespect his employees. Oh. He started to fire employees. He started to curse at employees. He just was all over the place. And, you know, I always tell those people in this country, unfortunately, you cannot beat them up because you're going to go to police. You're going to kind of go somewhere to attorney because, you know, if you raise your hand on him, he'll be like, you know, hiding under his desk. But unfortunately, he became like that and he never kind of gave out until he grew a little bit older than he understood what he was doing wrong. And uh, now he changed a little bit, you know, with age. But uh, when he was younger, forget it, man. Like, uh, it just was horrible. Like, he completely changed. The money changed him. So, yeah, you know. that, that's a shame. It's, that's sad. It, and, and it, yeah, that's sad. And that's why. And you know what? Actually, the saddest part of this particular situation was that his um, original employees helped him to become, to get, yeah. get money, become rich. And yeah. he got rid of all of them. He just wow. got rid of all of them. He was friends. He was good friends with them. And he just started to just, you know, disrespecting them, not showing up to their, like, events because he said that he has more money. And mm -hmm. that basically completely changed people's opinion about him. And that's it. He lost his friends. He said, I don't care about that. I got money. You yeah, know, you so money. Well, completely. Some people, I mean, some, thankfully, we haven't ever had to have that you know experience but man money can change people for sure yeah so uh let me say hello to glenn and join the house storage band is welcome guys appreciate you stopping by uh kristen is saying some have really big big heads now that's most likely that's not just some i think a lot some people are yeah. definitely not how they appear to be i've bought I've, yeah. i bought from quite a few youtubers and you'd be surprised how many bad experience i had with items not wow. as described see maya that's actually i think uh, it's true maybe for a lot of instances i'm not sure uh how it is but uh, most likely it is what it is so yeah. like, i cannot tell because i didn't buy from a lot of resellers youtubers on in their ebay stores but thankfully the stuff i bought from them i didn't have any issues so like yeah. from, the, from the ones that i bought from so yeah. that's kind of i cannot say anything bad yeah uh, tommy bernard saying my guess is they usually get banned for life uh most likely rise and grind ben in the house uh, everyone oh, actually i i'm not sure if it's ben or not but uh rise and grind uh, everyone is in it for the money to some extent yeah and and to that to that statement though if you start with that is your reason for to doing youtube then you're going to end up being like the the people that you just described that you know change right so they might seem really nice when they first start making videos and as they get subscribers get views get money uh now it's all about the money because that's why they started to do it in the first place right. and you gotta yeah at some point you get enough subscribers enough views because it's all about the views not subscribers uh how you get money when you're on youtube but if that's your main focus then um yeah, you're not going to be the same person uh, in the 10th year of doing it than you are when you started. Yeah. That's cool. And, and, that, and that, there's, there's nothing wrong with if you have the pure intention of building up a YouTube channel, that there's nothing wrong with that if that's what your goal is. But to be dishonest and and not be forthcoming with your audience, that's a different story. You know, there's, there's certain people that are – even they they're resellers but they're youtubers and they're they're in it for the content and their ebay is just it's just there for the content and so 
it, there's nothing wrong with that. No. But to be transparent, that is that is the number one thing. You know, we don't we don't make a lot of money on YouTube, and we're okay with that because that's not why we do it. You know, I mean, the, we make less less now on YouTube than we did say a year and a half two yeah. years ago um, per video, and it it's no big deal. It's you know, I could go in and, and try to make a production out of every video that I make and make it into something and take away time from the business, which is the, the uh, eBay business. And I'm not interested in that. I want to maintain that. And I think a lot of people transform from being a YouTuber that does uh, an eBay or that does YouTube. And then they become a YouTuber that happens to do eBay. And I don't want to be that person. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah that's uh, like, a, like you. Number one. That is true, uh, absolutely true, guys. And actually, I can tell you, there are YouTubers who are basically a transparent that they're making money on YouTube and they're doing YouTube, and that's how they make money on their YouTube channels, and that's fine. I mean, if they address it the way they are, and it is what it is, they are free to do that. There, it's a free country; they can do whatever they want. Yeah. So, like, mm -hmm. if they make money for their family uh, doing YouTube and it works for them. Why not? You know, I said it before, like uh, if it works, if YouTube algorithm brings their channel like up and uh, get, they get a lot of views from their videos, if they're consistent, uh, consistently putting out videos and the YouTube kind of puts pushes their content out, thumbnails, whatever, I mean, works for them. That's fine. I mean, if they're transparent on their channel saying, yes, that's where we make money on YouTube. We're coming out with that. We're trying to make money on YouTube. And sometimes even they make more money doing uh, YouTube compared to yeah. reselling. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. I mean, right. it is what it is. And if they provide uh, proper content, if they actually, you know, not going around lying about things and stuff like that, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, there are big time YouTubers with a lot of subs that actually provide uh, good information and uh, have not, nothing against them. You mm -hmm. know, they're trying to run their business this way. Nothing will stop them. They will run this business the way they're doing even with a lot of criticism, a lot of uh, negativity, negative comments, they'll still run it because they got thick skin and they decided that they still will continue for, I mean, it depends like, of course, on their own kind of mindset for how long they want to continue, but they will do it if they, it makes some money. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so that's what the kind of, um, by the way, Andy Sometha says, speaking of God feelings, I need to message you guys for your address. I think, uh, oh. it's about, uh, uh giveaway most likely oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why, why did you say gut feelings though uh andy why did you say gut feelings you're gonna have to wear glasses again man. send us a message andy send us a message yeah, on instagram. instagram or you can send it to our email flipping ain't easy 2020 at gmail.com See, Andy, if you still oh, here, where you go, man? Write it down on a piece of paper, man. <laughs> We're going to reach out to the end and find out if you did. <laughs> uh, Marie is saying, well, I would have answered you sooner, Roman, but you called me on an app that I don't have notification. Yeah, actually, Marie, I actually replied to you on Instagram that I pressed uh, call on Instagram by mistake. And oh. it's called. It My mom does that all the time. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Yeah, when you scroll down on Instagram, you push so many buttons. That Instagram starts calling a lot of people. They don't know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marie, I'm sorry about that. The one and a half, the one short, also. Uh, the one. Hey. hey, babe. See, she says, I, I know, I know you. <laughs> got a sale. Is it something I just listed? No, it's the Ropers. No? These things have been listed forever. How much? The Ropers? Yeah, they're little roper like loafer shoes. Full um, it's they're full ostrich, ostrich leather. Ostrich leather. Not so they're leather. it's not they're real, cool. but they're they're real ropers. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm just glad they're going. So I'm good That's with good. that. Yay! I got a sale. Now, Jenna, Jenna, we have to know everyone in the chat needs to know how much they sold for. It's very yep. important. Um, 20 <laughs> Twenty-one dollars and plus shipping. See, plus shipping, guys. Don't That's forget. Right. That's very important. Yeah. 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 Thirty-one and eighty-nine. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not bad. That's, that's, that's on the secondary store. That's on the second store that yeah. doesn't get a whole lot of action for whatever reason. It's just cursed. 
but yeah uh my other store um i had a couple sales that came across this my my volume wasn't on but uh we're at the oh my day. god we have 12 sales yeah we have 12 wow. to ship out for the weekend right. but uh we have 523 so far today and still have tonight to go so oh right on par where i want to be and tomorrow too yeah yeah I'm well not here, I'm not not i am the shipper so i my only care is how many i have to start shipping by sunday night yeah. <laughs> Well, that's not a bad problem to have. I mean, that's no. the thing. That's a good problem. That's okay a good problem. Yeah. Sales are sales. Profit is profit. Right. Yep. Yeah. Good I'll problem. Take it. Good problem to have, guys. Also, yes. uh, by the way, Jenna, Tommy Bernard appreciates your transparency about the sale. <laughs> that just has to stop for thirty-one dollars, <laughs> eighty-two cents plus shipping. So Tommy can sleep yes. uh, normally today, guys. After yep. he learned that uh, it didn't go with free shipping. Because otherwise, you would have come in into chat and started started to explain to us how important it is to add extra on top of the sale to charge That's for shipping. Great. So, uh, thank yeah, you, Tommy, Tommy, for your input. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got we got Silver Hair Stacker in the house, uh, one of the favorite fans. Hey, it's Larry of John and, <laughs> and his <laughs> magical hand. Beautiful Lisa and Jenna and ugly dude. That's absolutely true. Absolutely true, Todd. Uh, Roman surely puts out exactly Andy. Sometimes I try Andy with my age putting out is not very important anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying my best, man. Believe me, believe me. Andy. We have to. All the guys have to try to put out as much as they can until they turn about 50 years old. After 50, you put out more. <laughs> well, whoa! I just turned fifty. I don't know what you have, what insider info you've got. <laughs> just, uh, just, yes, just exercise, exercise, do all those things consistently, like putting out YouTube channel. Andy, uh, making love also has to be consistent, man. You have to make love to your wife consistently, consistently. That's when you don't forget how to do it. Because oh. when you forget how to do it, then you, you never know what can happen. <laughs> and it's only in 18 you know, you know <laughs> um, Is anyone coming to hang out in Nashville? Angie is asking. Guys, anyone going to Nashville in two weeks for the meetup? No, I in wish Nashville? we were, but we're not. John has a, a golf trip that he's going to be going on, so we can't make it. No. I wish we could. I would love to go to Nashville. Well, Angie uh, just asked the good question and uh, to answer, I will be in Nashville, guys. Oh, so you will. I am going to Nashville, guys. So Angie already kind of knows a little bit about it from Marco Polo. I was kind of inconsistent on that, but uh, the the probability of me going to Nashville now increased to 90%. So no. I will be most likely, guys, 90% I'll be in Nashville. So you better, you better get booking. Guys, yes, don't forget in uh, Nashville, I will go to the hotel and sleep for three days. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, may not, you may not see me. Because <laughs> I'll be tired. I'll be tired of driving, guys. So I will sleep in the hotel and never come out. <laughs> Angie can visit me. So I'll, I'll give Angie my room number so she can visit me in the hotel. <laughs> Dollar Brian is saying when you source with Roman, you have to feed Roman. That's the rule. Brian, man, that's the thing, man. We actually had a great time. And we ate some good food, which was healthy, because I originally wanted to take Brian to some kind of burger place with chicken wings and chicken strips. And then I realized that health is more important, guys. So we yes. went to eat at another place. <laughs> so go? what did you end up having? We actually went to the place here. It's called Bibibop. It's like a, like a Korean-Asian uh, fusion type of uh, like a small restaurant similar to Chipotle. Like you order like uh, different types of meats, like on your in your like bowl. You can make uh -huh. your own bowl, or you can order the chef's bowl with different ingredients. Like you can add whatever you want, like rice, meat, potatoes, yeah. like uh, broccoli, or like different types of vegetables. Like similar. That's so to, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Was, it's really good. I mean, I don't know. Like some of them are actually are in another states. A bibibop place. I mean, I don't know. We have oh. them in Ohio. Is it a talking about on. Korean barbecue? There we have yeah. this place that's called it's it, you call it BB Bop. Yes. 
I think I know what you're talking about. You talking about that stupid yes. ramen place you yes. drive through, and it's it, like is it a does it have drive throughs? Cup, cup bop. Cup bop. Um, it's not oh, well. Cup it's bop. similar, maybe a similar type of uh, idea on how they do stuff, but it's very similar to a lot of different newer type of restaurants with like you know when you want to go out and like eat like it's not that expensive uh but i mean it's kind of good i mean that's kind of a good food it's not like you know fast food so it's like yeah. uh, they they say it's um korean barbecue in a cup well then he didn't have it in a cup uh, yeah you we have it in the bowl so it's like is yeah, a bowl like it's kind of like a chipotle but it's a it's kind of the korean same but food. it's not the same. right it's not yeah similar like chipotle similar is like that. yeah chipotle is different like uh sim they have similar ingredients like uh, they will have rice and bibibab has rice they have purple rice and chipotle yeah. i think has like some kind of other rice there too but it's like different type of um other stuff like uh okay. that chipotle doesn't have like some of them they have some they don't. So it's like some ingredients are similar and some are not. So, but right. same okay. idea, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so That's if you're ever in Cleveland, guys, we're going to go to Bibi Bob. Okay. <laughs> so, John and Jenna, stop by tomorrow, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we're on uh, our way. Uh, I'm way behind in the chat, as usual, guys. I apologize in advance, guys. So, guys, actually, I wanted to put uh, John and Jenna uh, channel into the chat so you guys. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Actually, it was very nice of John and Jen. I appreciate them a lot for inviting me to their life and, uh, you know, to get me a little bit of exposure to my channel. So I really appreciate it, guys, also. And uh, I hope okay. it was not a bad life. Hopefully, you guys didn't lose subscribers after no, my no, life, no, after no. the life it was me being a guest. So, you know, so no, I appreciate no, it. Um, Tommy is saying Ohio is the 45th on my USA bucket list out of 47 love to visit. Yes, Tommy never leaves Delaware. He's like uh, loves his state. He usually Delaware, I guess, is not like really big state. So Tommy is like, you know, I'm not gonna leave the state ever. I'm not gonna <laughs> go anywhere. So he and his wife doesn't let him out much. He yeah. kind of goes only to lives, helps out people chat in the chat with different questions, I mean, I mean, answers. Those are eBay questions or reselling questions. And, you know, has done good job. I mean, Tommy usually tries to be, you know, more transparent with everything. So it is what it is, guys. You know how Tommy is. So, I mean, uh, he is such a person. There are people like that. And even me, guys, I can say some stuff that people don't want to hear. <laughs> uh, Roman makes me laugh all the time. Devon, appreciate it. It's only you, believe me. My wife <laughs> usually leaves right away. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell you uh, behind the scenes. I mean, I got so much good advice from Tommy just on Instagram. You know, uh, discussions back and forth. I mean, he's the reason why I, I spent what I spent on those lights this last week. That's uh, coming to the house. So, yeah. Thanks, Tommy. <laughs> Blame Tommy. Tommy, thank Blame you, Tommy. man, for your kindness, man. Tommy yeah. sometimes can be kind, guys. He probably has a good heart, you know. I don't, I don't know, guys. No, I think <laughs> he really does have a, a a kind heart, you know. The guy takes his daughter to ballet. I mean, you know what? The only difference between Tommy and everyone else is he actually says what's on his mind. Yes. It was other people, they they you know it's on their mind, but like, nah, I'm not going to type that into chat. Tommy's like, I don't care. I'm typing into chat. That's yeah. the difference. Yeah. yeah, that's true. And I mean, there, that's like I said, I people, people are like that. And, uh, you know, I've met, I, I actually know a lot of Russian guys who are like that, exactly like him. They will just say as it is to your face. Yeah. They're not yeah. afraid. They will tell you about you. You're going to punch them. They're going to punch you back. Guys, mm -hmm. believe me, because I mean, some people are like that. They will know what kind of person you are. They will try to speak out about certain people. So they will come out and speak out. And yeah. if you don't like it, you're not going to pay attention to that and kind of avoid that. But some people don't, and they try to get into verbal confrontations. And right. it is what it is, guys. All people are different. So yeah. you cannot make everyone happy. You know, there's going to be a bunch of other people who are unhappy. And sure. similar to, like, comments in your YouTube videos, some, you know, YouTube videos that you put out, a lot of negativity sometimes, some negative comments. And that's what makes you amazing in terms of trying to take it all, whoever does consistent YouTube kind of getting already, you know, used to those types of situations. So 
It is what it is, guys. But I cannot say more than that. Most likely, you have to ask Tommy about other stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we got Amy in the house. Beach by repeat. Just want to pop in and say hi, guys. Yeah, Amy, actually, I started watching your new video today from Garage Sales. I have to finish it. It was nice. Already in the beginning, it was a good video. So I'll keep watching, uh, hopefully, tomorrow. Uh, Thrifty Mom, Kristen says, Roman is a great person. I appreciate it, Kristen. Actually, guys, Kristen does whatnots uh, on, uh, like, on whatnot. And uh, I will put her, um, actually, I can tell you, she does a great job, guys. If you're ever in whatnot and follow her, she does the whatnots very often. Like every... Is, is her um, name the same as her screen name here? Yeah, Thrifty Mom, I'll put in uh, her uh, link, guys, into the chat right now so you can follow her on WhatNot. She's she got WhatNot scheduled till like August. Yeah, she is <laughs> actually on there all the time, consistently, like almost. Wow. Kristen, yeah. how many? I think she does it three times per week. Uh, yeah, for WhatNot. So it's that's madness. Crazy. And she does it like almost, uh, like I would say, uh, same time, nine something, nine fifteen. So, guys, it's Eastern time. So, I put the link in the chat. And, uh, guys, follow her because she does an amazing job. I have a lot wow. of, uh, a lot of 5, followers on whatnot. That's amazing. Good job. Yeah, she does an amazing job. And uh, I was just in her whatnot a couple days ago. So, uh, follow her on whatnot, nice. guys. Um, and, so uh, like I said, consistency, consistency is the key, guys, in everything. Very much so. So, uh, John and Jenna, let's ask you about this type of thing. How was your decision? Uh, I, I, I'm probably thinking both of you kind of were in the decision making of uh, how you wanted to start your channel. Uh, was it a more of educational? Because I think it started out as being more educational type of content right away, right? Yeah, I just, just wanted to go over things that I was like, I was dealing with as a reseller. And so, you know, you have this thing called eBay Island. And it's, I think almost every reseller either has gone through it or is currently going through it if they don't know anyone else that resells. And that's kind of, you know, we're in a new city. When we moved to Vegas, you know, we're getting the pallets in and it just kind of became a grind with no one to really talk about. I mean, I talked to her about it, but uh, having the channel was, you know, a way to kind of just me sitting in front of a camera talking about the things that I was dealing with. And I thought, you know, a few people would respond and this, that, and I think it's kind of how it worked out. And then just kind of to, to build and build and build. But it was, I guess, almost like therapy, you know, uh, reseller therapy where I could just get in front of a camera and uh, talk about the things that I, I discovered and what I'm dealing with. And it kind of turned into policy discussions and stuff. And uh, I, I kind of want to get back to that because the channel kind of, went from, you know, here's what I'm doing every day and this is what I encountered, you know, just having that discussion. And it kind of went more towards a, you know, this is eBay policy on this. And it kind of left out a lot of my experiences, I think, in some cases, not all, but um, so I kind of want to get back to that. I just miss having those chats. Sort of like a Josh Galt uh, uh, discussion, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, guys, and don't forget that uh, currently John and Scott Bearded Picker are doing their podcast right now. When Josh left, uh, Scott stepped in. <laughs> a great so, job. That's the Profit Playbook podcast. We dropped uh, our latest episode today, and uh, you know we we used to try to sort of you know throughout the week figure out what do you want to talk about. I don't know what do you want to talk about. Now it's just like you know what we're not even going to have a subject. We're just going to get together and we're just going to talk and uh i find that the conversation really is it's organic that way and it's uh you know really good when it's not scripted you just let it go where it goes and that's uh, if you guys like that type of thing uh where you know two two or more people get together and just talk ebay or in this case on this channel it's reselling not just ebay yeah. then uh it's certainly something uh, worth checking out yeah, guys, so check it out. It's actually also Scott does a great job on Wednesdays and uh, also Fridays, guys, as he goes live with a lot of different guests. And John is one of them <laughs> on Fridays most of the time. So in Roman? Wednesdays, yes. Oh, no, uh, Larry Todd is saying that, you know, it's okay. You ignore him as always. Uh, he 
he sent a, a little super sticker thing for you. But Just, that's uh, stripper money. Dad, you have to send us uh, more money, man. <laughs> <laughs> you cost more. Now, now I have to, to wear glasses again, guys. Yeah, sorry, I was transparent <laughs> about it, guys. Dad, Dad. We're poor channel, man. Two dollars will not do us any good. <laughs> Lisa Whatever said, YouTube gets their fingers. <laughs> uh, that Lisa said that I'm not paying her at all, so she needs more money. <laughs> uh, Todd, appreciate it, man. <laughs> Todd, you go to like a movie and get those those glasses, or where did you get those glasses? No, those are actually, I actually I you got them. Library? No, those I got on Amazon before Eclipse. I decided uh, since last time when there was Eclipse in Cleveland, it was partial Eclipse. And I was just looking at it from like using regular sunglasses. So no, apparently... Glasses in an Eclipse, Roman. I, I actually, John, to tell you the truth, I didn't... I used them actually to watch the Eclipse because I was afraid if I don't, I may become <laughs> really blind and will not be, <laughs> I will not be able to read any no comments. <laughs> <laughs> so... Actually, it was a good tool for me also. Like sometimes, you know, when I don't want to talk to my wife, man, I will wear glasses. <laughs> and I will like, sorry, honey, I have to leave. And uh, you you're not really looking into her eyes anymore. So that, that, it's a good tool, guys. If you're married, if you want to go somewhere, you put the glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> so, God did yeah. it again. Yeah, it, it happens. It happens, guys. Unfortunately, we have to be transparent about that kind of stuff. Uh, found a set of the wiggles today. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of set of wiggles it is, but it is most likely <laughs> some kind of some kind of good stuff, guys. I don't oh, know specifically. <laughs> I my child was. I got lied to today at the art sale. I bought this little receipt scanner uh, for three bucks. Like, yeah, we, you know, it's, this thing's like brand new. It's had the box and everything, and all the everything. Yeah, it even has like the disc in there. And they're like really selling this thing up, right? So I'm um, thinking this thing's got to be worth something. And they're like, well, I don't know how much you want for it. Oh, $3. So I kind of, I, I put it aside. I'm looking around. I, I look it up and I'm like, yeah, this thing's going for like 60 bucks. You know what? I'll go with it. I, I gave her three bucks and I left and I brought it home to list. I'm testing it out. The thing go power on. She sold me a broken item. So it's like that. Wow, sucks. I tried different cables. Sucking. I tried everything. That thing did not work. So it's like, wow. I mean, you needed the three bucks that bad. Jeez. Wow, that's okay. good. Was it on eBay or like some other oh, it was a yard, yard sale. sale? Yard sale today. Oh, I was like, I was thinking about liver negative feedback. <laughs> I mean, it was in great condition. It was clean. It had they had all the receipts for when they bought it for like 120 something bucks. They had the software. They had. All the like the cleaning pack, everything. It was like really. I mean, three bucks is gonna pass that up. You that know, that seems and, like a lot of work to milk three dollars. Yeah, well, they had to know. I mean, yeah. I know we we are we're in hard times, but for so, real, <laughs> I mean. Wow. Well, that's what happens. Unfortunately, I think like uh, I ran into this issue also a lot in the past. Is that uh, sometimes you ask people at a garage sale if like especially me because I do sell a lot of electronics. And I will yeah. ask, like, if something works, and people will say most of the time, uh, they will say yes. Some of people say they're not sure. Like, and I would kind of respect that kind of reply. You know, if person tells you it's they're not sure, that yeah. way you kind of know maybe how if you want to spend that amount on certain thing or not. So, right. like, uh, that when they tell you it does work, especially with VCR DVD combos, VCRs, uh, tape decks, yeah. all that type of stuff, vintage stuff. Usually, I already learned throughout the years. Most of the time, it's like 50-50. Like, if it yeah. may work 50% of time and 50%, probably not. Yeah. So, right. But then, like, then you can look up and see if, if you can, if it has previous solds on like parts of repair, right? So, worst case scenario, you can sell for parts of repair and get your money back. But yeah, I'm like, wow. And I really wanted this and thing the fact to work. That it was a yard sale, which means we know where you live. Where they live. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> That's why I was like, you want to leave negative feedback? You can throw really? some flaming something into your house. Yeah, yeah. leave them negative feedback on That's eBay. That's what I think. Like, <laughs> 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 uh, Tommy like, Bernard is saying, guys, YouTube is a short game, very short shelf life in, the, in this space. Viewers forget fast when they're bored or don't need that level of info anymore. eBay reselling is a business. 
Well, yeah, guys, I mean, it is what it is. And viewers change constantly. Some viewers leave, yeah. some subscribers unsubscribe, some just, you know, completely go like turn their YouTube off. So yeah. basically, it just changes all the time. But the reselling business is staying. I mean, right. it changes like to live selling now to other platforms, but it doesn't, you know, specifically change in the view viewership itself. It depends on the platform. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you, in my opinion, if you put out good content and you do it consistently uh, for like many years, I mean, most likely YouTube algorithm will make your channel grow. Uh, and uh, we have seen examples of that. And a lot of uh, people will agree there is a lot of bad channels out there you know i'm not afraid to say that and there are a lot of bad information and it's just uh, it is what it is people don't care i said it in the last life people will still be subscribing and those types of uh, youtubers who provide bad information will still be gaining subs i mean either by either buying subs or they just gonna get more subs so it right. is, it is right. what it is guys it's not gonna change they are free to do so they're not gonna listen to any criticism about it if they want to be such people they'll be such people that's it nothing yeah, people you can do themselves. they gotta find out for themselves you know uh and and for youtubers to say don't watch this channel and don't watch that channel it's it doesn't come off right so yeah i've, I've got my opinions on different channels but i just let the viewer figure it out themselves you know if you watch channel b and they give you the information you need then keep watching them you know that's the way it works yeah and sometimes well, like, YouTubers will give out information that works for one person that doesn't work for someone else. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that they're giving out bad information. It just mean, it means you're giving out information that maybe doesn't work for you and what you're selling. That's true. That's up, and they and most you know what's funny about it, John and Jenna, is that people uh, sometimes will go and put so many negative comments in certain videos, and there is a big question always, even for like for everyone, why do you when you fucking watch that stuff? Like, mm -hmm. why, why are you watching it if you're so unsatisfied about exactly. this that you keep watching and leave, leaving people negative comments constantly? Right. What what makes your life so fucking bad that yeah. you have to constantly do it and go <laughs> leave comments on people to, like, screw up their life? Some people, I said it before, even talk about their family. Yeah. And, like, this is, especially when people have, like, you know, family YouTube channels, this is even worse. Oh, it has to be like, you have to be the fucking low life of all time to do right. it. You sound very passionate about this subject. Do you get a lot of trolls that have left uh, bad comments on your videos, Roman? No, actually, thank you. He's very passionate I, about this. I, I don't put out a lot of I don't put out a lot of content uh, as of right now yet, and I just uh, like I said, it's for me. It's kind of fun right now, you know, trying to do lives at least. Lisa enjoys it, hopefully, some sometimes. <laughs> I mean, uh, but we're partially monetized right now on this live. And uh, recently, I appreciate all of you guys subscribing. We, okay. I passed 1,000 subscribers, which is, for me, it's kind of uh, being humble as I am is an accomplishment on its own because, you know, I don't put out a lot of stuff. And some educational videos that I put out, I mean, uh, you know, I'm trying my best, guys. You know, I, I just trying. Uh, recently, I put out some videos about uh, VCRs and stuff, so... It's just uh, something that I like to do. I mean, it's just, uh, okay. but I, I love your cooking ones. I will do some in the summer. I'll do some barbecue yeah. cooking videos outside, which is yeah. going to be more fun for me because I like yeah. it this way. And some uh, shish kebabs. I'll do Ooh. some shish kebab videos and put them out. So coming just soon. I love the way he says that too. I mean, that's just shish kebab. It's shish kebab, <laughs> guys, I love. I love. <laughs> I love fish kebabs. Of diff I will do different types of meats. <laughs> yeah. hopefully, like hope guys, hopefully I'm not going to get any negative comments on that. If you feel feel free to leave negative comments, of course. Maybe it's going to help algorithm. Maybe my channel will be picked up by YouTube. <laughs> right. Yes, yeah. whether it's good or bad, even the negatives will get in the algorithm and make your video do whatever. Yeah, that's what happens. Well, that's that's what why people don't understand is they can be as rude as they want all day long, and you know mm -hmm. that they have something that their life is miserable, and so they have to express it out to others in their negative, uh, negative way, and that will still make the algorithm 
make the do its thing. I mean, it, it's that's what they don't understand. And there are some that do get to me, but you know, I don't have as thick of skin as he does. And so, yeah. but you know, I I tend to not let it bother me. I'll just delete it and move on. Um, the longer you do it, the more the the easier it is. Yeah. So that's uh, that's what happens with experience. Comes a lot of comes a lot with experience, you know. Like you know, you learn along the way because uh, already kind of being in the reselling community. And you know, guys, you probably will agree with me also is that uh, from the past, I would say like from like say for example, ten years ago, whoever were starting the reselling YouTube channels, a lot of those uh, content creators quit, yeah. you know, throughout the years and just disappeared. Right. on youtube entirely some i don't see anymore i remember being in tommy bernard and tracy's podcast and there were so many youtubers not youtubers i would say a lot of different personalities even content creators who are i don't see anymore in the chats yeah. you know like uh i've seen them before like say five years ago but i uh, don't see a lot of them anymore so that's like yeah. some people just quit and just don't go anymore or just you know quit youtube or just quit reselling so mm -hmm. they, you know, they just don't appear in a magical world. Right. <laughs> right. um, Woody in the house. Can stay long. Been moving three acres down. Still have two more acres to go. Re Woody, appreciate oh, you stopping by, man. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, Chad is saying, is this the sexy Russian voice that helps to keep me off the couch tonight? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chad, you have to learn some Russian uh, accent, man, and talk to your wife. She'll enjoy that. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> uh, Rise and Grind saying, I know YouTubers that have stolen money, stabbed people in the back, etc. I have short friends list. See, wow. I mean, it's not just uh, Rise and Grind, unfortunately, I can tell you for uh, that it's not just YouTube uh, itself, like resale, yeah. whatever. I, I know people with close friends, like really close friends, that stabbed them in the business, like in the business type of environment with partners where they were really close friends growing up sometimes together and they got backstabbed by their own friends. So guys, friends, it, I, will, I always say it, like it doesn't matter if it's in YouTube world or anywhere else. The most important thing is your family. Absolutely. Um, the most important thing guys, is your family. Friends will come and go. We'll be friends a couple, like a week's one, one friend, then he'll leave and forget about you. Right. Or you will have another friend that you had for like years who will right. backstab you in business. And it happened numerous times, guys. We had I had friends here, Russian friends, that had business together. They got uh, completely separated, sued each other in the court, guys. Best friends were going together to different uh, events and uh, with their wives and then backstabbed each other and started calling each other bad names. So, guys, wow. this happens. Unfortunately, it's the truth. Yeah. It, it is the, the family, guys, is the most important. Yeah. yeah. Like business with the family, even though some people call business with the family not always works, but at least hopefully your family will not. If someone, if there are instances when family backstab people, so that's yeah, it happens unfortunately. So yeah, very um, true. Let me say hello to some people I miss, guys, because I'm way behind. I really apologize, guys, and I'm gonna try to put uh, channels links again before uh, we end our live today. Uh, we got uh, Leroy in the house, blood, sweat, and cell. I want to say hello to two of my favorite people. Hello, Tommy, and hello, Jennifer. Uh, Leroy, I appreciate you stopping by, man. Actually, guys, another great informational channel to watch uh, is uh, Reseller Information Network with Leroy. Uh, Eric, OBX speaker. My, my son's name is Eric, so that's why I always remember Eric, because <laughs> my son's name is Eric. So um, Leroy and... Um, Tim and uh, my favorite YouTuber of all time, Serna Connections. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just love Serna Connections, guys. With his, uh, like, when with his, my favorite phrase is "pick it up." Whenever I tell, like, see when I when I go to Beans, I tell other resource, if you see something, Serna tells you pick it up. They don't know who Serna is, and I tell them, I, I, don't worry about it, just pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. <laughs> just uh, do it. Justin in the house. Justin Perry sounds similar to the Mongolian. Yeah, that's actually what it is. We're talking still about the um, that Bibibab place. 
Bibi yeah. <laughs> was kind of like pokeball, pokeball. Yeah, we actually have a restaurant here, actually. I think it's called pokeball, actually, also with Hawaiian type of uh, chipotle stuff. So that's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I went to the auction today, was thinking about you. Um, yeah, see about Leroy. Yeah, there you go. Tommy was thinking about me too, guys. <laughs> 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 Patrick in the house, flying flying by. Patrick, appreciate you stopping by. Uh so guys, what is uh, uh originally what was your stuff that you started reselling with? Like I know John uh, that you were mostly selling specific things in the beginning, and uh mm -hmm. now you most likely try to look for most of the stuff. I would not say everything else, uh, and I I'm not sure if maybe you are everything seller like me. Uh, you guys like currently yeah. look for everything to sell? Well, I mean, we don't look for everything. I mean, if I could fall into a, a, a buy where it's the same skew, I would, you know, and I can make good money at it. I would find that would buy it in a heartbeat. Um, it, it's kind of started when, when we were kind of forced into this thing, we're like, okay, what are we going to do? So uh, we're like, well, there's some videos talking about going to Marshall's and Ross and, buying the shoes there and buying the stuff on clearance. And I guess well, that's where we're going to start because yeah. we had some bad liquidation. Like we were part-time. We bought um, a pallet of um, the hell bulk. Remember that pallet? Mm -hmm. And I had like a couple good things and the rest was like crap. And I'm like, this sucks. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of got soured on liquidation. So we were kind of open to everything. And, you know, so when we, when we lost our jobs, you know, we went out, we went to all these Marshalls and Rosses and uh, filled the car up. And we even like posed in front of the stuff, all proud of ourselves. And we so got it listed and the stuff didn't <laughs> sell hardly at all. I'm like, this sucks. So yeah. like I started, okay, what happens when the stuff doesn't sell? You start looking for things that do, right? And so we found uh, some liquidation companies online, uh, found some pretty good things. We had the money. Okay, let's order this $5,000 pallet. Got a palette of nothing but video game stuff. It was uh, mostly Nintendo, uh, Nintendo Switch, uh, just all kinds of good stuff. And it was like gold. Yeah. And it was like, wow, this is this is the way to go. So we just started ordering, buying pallets, having it delivered to us. Mm -hmm. And that's for the a good two, two and a half years after that. I mean, that's what we were doing, ordering pallets. And then we moved to Vegas. We're actually going and picking up pallets and stuff. And that's... Yeah. Uh, how we we made it work. Yeah, Palace buying is actually I so think... literally everything. <laughs> In the beginning, it was a lot of, you know, we don't want to sell large items. We don't want to sell heavy items. We were being very picky. But in the end, that was our, you know, if we didn't branch out to where we are now selling large items, mm -hmm. then we we would have failed a while ago. Yeah. So we had no choice because the liquidation was getting so bad that because the employees were picking through it and taking out all the the high dollar amount um, things. Yeah. And so that sucked. And we you know, we were we had to go and start driving for Uber Eats and things got really, really bad. Um, and so finally John found, you know, some different ways to, to make money or find, find liquid or was it liquidation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that changed our entire business. And the next year we just, our sales skyrocketed and it was amazing. So you constantly, you can be, you know, you might sometimes look right in your own backyard to find the best gold and you know you don't really see it unless you're you actually get out and look for it so that's what we did and and we've been doing it ever since so thank god for that but it really took a toll on us you know we were pretty scared we were gonna have to go back to the corporate world and we were like oh no i don't want to <laughs> no so and you guys, uh, actually, I kind of uh, forget forgot to ask you. Do you get you guys quit at the same time when you quit your jobs? Well, they um, closed the we office. We didn't quit. We we oh. were let go because they closed our office. And so yeah, we were. Yeah, uh, it was a January eighteenth of twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, January eighteenth, twenty nineteen. We they they locked the doors, and that was it. 
and we were we were like you, people you, wandering around talking having a good time it was the last day you know taking photos of each other playing music and uh, you know even though they told us hey you guys got to get them on the phones yeah these guys weren't no I mean, we <laughs> we didn't take any calls that day um we were just saying goodbye and you know because many of these people have become family you know you've you've sat by them for years and years and years and you you know their family you know their children you watch their children you know some of them you know go from they just got married and then they had kid you just you follow their lives and you're very invested in their well-being and their family and hope hope for success for them but you know it it was a very sad day it was very heartbreaking um but we still keep in touch with the important ones and you know so some people some people went off to philadelphia and and started a new life and then you know some of them did what we did and we they stepped away from the company and are working other places so you know we've all are all over the country now which is crazy because i've got you know friends that were in california and now live in you know tennessee and texas and it's wild so yeah. so it's it's nice but yeah we did we did uh have to leave the, the same day i mean we were bawling the same as we drove away it was it was a very hard when you're when you're comfortable and your your money's there and that's your stability and your everything you know and it's the door is shut it's very it's a it's a tough time <laughs> no that's true uh, actually that's 100 i mean especially you worked for so many years there yes yeah, yeah. in one place some people work at 15 i mean that is life it's that a really long is. time it's all we you know i mean i have had other jobs obviously but the reason i i started working there were not the greatest of circumstances i mean obviously i thrived once i got there but it was i was thrown into that job just pure circumstance you know i was in a very bad car accident and i couldn't walk for long periods of time and before i used to work i was a manager at a dental office and i walked around my building all day long do you know telling people what to do basically and i couldn't do that job anymore because i couldn't walk for very long periods of time and so i had to find something else that i could do that i could sit down and um ended up getting you know a job at at amtrak and i was i stayed there for for like we said 15 years so and he came there right at what 18 19. i started when i was 19. Yeah. wow man that's crazy that's so, I, mean, I, I i'd be almost retired if i would have finished uh doing 30 years they have a thing where it's a 30 60 rule where if you uh put in 30 years you can retire at 60 full benefits right mm -hmm. um missed it by four years so i mean that was the only reason why i would even think about going to philadelphia on that offer but yeah just it was a lot of you know back and forth what if we do go to philadelphia how are we going to see our family how you know how are we going to make that work there was a lot of conversation and we again mind you we only had 60 day notice mm -hmm. and so it was extremely scary for that period of time not knowing what we were going to do and we would go back and forth okay let's go to philadelphia and we'll 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 make the trip back to california as every time we can but then his dad got very very sick yeah and we knew we could not leave him yeah and so that was kind of the determining factor because maybe not many people know but John is an old, he, well, is an only child and he doesn't have any other family. His mother passed away many years ago. And so his dad was all he had. And so when he got sick, we were like, oh no, we're definitely not leaving him now. Um, there was no way. And so we, we, that was the deciding factor was to stay stay in California and do what we had to do. And unfortunately, about a year later, he passed away. But yeah. um, sorry about that, man. Yeah. 
Yeah. It was right when COVID was uh, happening, right? Yeah. So we think that's what he passed away from. They didn't know what it was at the time. Yeah, yeah my did. dad, my dad's the same way, man. My dad passed away in the end of 2019, and oh. they didn't know. They didn't know he was basically having uh, all those uh, uh, what are they called signs of COVID uh, yes. symptoms. Symptoms yeah. that later mm -hmm. on we learned that's gonna be COVID symptoms in 2020. Yes. And that's uh, my dad passed away in the end of 2019, and uh, they oh, didn't know. Sorry, his yeah. yeah, his long stuff. My dad it was amazing. I told you guys at the reseller rally. I mean, he was an amazing. He was a strong guy. He was fighting cancer two times. Uh, first time he had uh, stage two cancer, mm -hmm. and he was fighting it. I uh, had uh, chemotherapy, radiation. I was going to doctors with him. He didn't want to do. He had a bladder cancer. They told mm -hmm. him they have to take the organ out. He didn't want to. He said he'll just die. He just doesn't want to do that. And uh, later on, I mean, uh, he got stage four cancer yeah. and still was fighting it. Uh, still was kind of in a good spirit, but this fucking cancer, uh, yeah. unfortunately, yeah, like completely destroyed him. I mean, I, I was crying like crazy. I was like yeah. uh, at the hospital uh, talking to doctors and I couldn't believe the shit. Like uh, yeah. they were telling me, sorry, uh, his lungs are completely stopped working, and mm -hmm. they had to basically do, make. Uh, well, they asked my mom if they want to make a decision on disconnecting, you know, and I, I said no. Mm -hmm. And then I had like talk with my brother, and uh, I was like crying so bad, I, like, yeah. I couldn't fucking do it. Yeah, you know, I couldn't fucking do it. And I was like, you know, eventually that's it. Uh, my brother made uh, later on, my older brother made the decision. Uh, yeah. that they will have to do that. I mean, the way they work, usually, if the person, as, as the heart start beating, they ask you if they want to do the, you know, the, what is it called, the CPR? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and uh, in those situations, if the family says no, they kind of let the person, you know, peacefully die. Right. Yeah, um, he, his dad had stage four lung cancer. Well, they said that he did. They said that he did, but the the problem was is he was having all of these COVID symptoms and we of course didn't know what that was or nobody, the doctors didn't know and they were running tests and doing this and doing that. Yeah. And finally it just came down to, he just, he just couldn't breathe anymore. Yeah. And so it, after the fact is when we found out all the symptoms that he really really did have and it was it was covid and yeah. we're we're sure of it but of course they won't put that on the death certificate because they didn't know at the time they didn't know what yeah. that was I yeah mean, they, they, they try to say it was stage four lung cancer but it's like well you just like a month or two prior saw a small spot that you guys were trying to treat that could be something right and to go from that to stage four when he was having all the symptoms of like lost love, couldn't, couldn't taste anything, taste anything. like at, uh, you know, uh, New Year's Eve, we had food at my, my daughter's house and, you know, couldn't taste anything. A week later, he was in the hospital with this thing. They removed seven liters of fluid out of his lungs. So it was just there's so many things that in hindsight, it's like, man, I wish that uh, I could have told the doctors, right? But even then, they'd be like, who are you? Yeah, they wouldn't believe me. Yeah, so they, uh, I mean, that's very unfortunate. I mean, that's the thing about it. I mean, they're doing as uh, the doctors. I mean, of course, doing their best, you know. But uh, certain situations like that, I mean, they kind of go like straightforward and let you know. I yeah. mean, uh, it is what it is. I mean, they can, they're not gods. I mean, they kind of you know people don't realize how much work doctors put in and nurses. Yeah. It's just unbelievable, like with dealing, because for them each person's life is unique, and mm -hmm. they trying their best. Because I know that uh, they're going to medical school for that. It's not reselling, guys. No, that's not. That's a difficult, <laughs> difficult. I actually I can tell you I applaud a lot of surgeons, like uh, people who go to school, medical yeah. school for many years to become anesthesiologists and surgeons. It's not making a YouTube video, guys. <laughs> it's not it's like on the different platforms. It's like yeah. serious. Uh, in my opinion, those people are amazing. You know, like yeah. I mean, they're those... lifesavers, life changers. They, 
they can they have the ability to keep keep you alive so yeah. that's true especially nowadays compared to nowadays with all the equipment guys it's just amazing uh the way the in especially in this country like back in the day when i was growing up in soviet union i had a surgery on my leg and they, the doctors there didn't have any computers they just uh, worked with just knowing what they're looking at when they just do surgery wow. they, didn't, they didn't rely on any monitors didn't rely on any like you know robots they just uh, and uh, my surgery was very complicated like the surgeon did amazing job wow. uh, and uh, that's I, no I <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and, uh, I remember it was in St. Petersburg, Russia, because um, uh, I was eight years old. I mean, maybe, yeah, eight or seven, seven or eight. And uh, it, where uh, John actually all the time when you do the lives with Jenna, you, you always tell me like I'm from Kazakhstan and I'm yeah. actually from Uzbekistan. Oh, <laughs> but it's fine, man. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> well, they're anyway. both over by the Caspian. So, so, right. me. so, so, so what's the one difference between someone from Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan? What's the one difference? Uh, ahead, actually, I'll... I can tell you a big difference. Uzbekistan is completely Muslim country, like Muslim. Okay. They're like not, they don't have any Christianity, basically. There are Christian people who live there nowadays, uh, even nowadays. But before, it was like a lot of different religions before they separated from Soviet Union. Uh, there was a lot of different religions, but when they separated, they became like they used to be originally before Soviet Union took over in yeah. the back in the 90, early 1900s. Uh, they became a Muslim country again, and they still, I mean, new generation right now mostly are Muslim. Like um, they're Muslim, I mean, old, like I would say, eight, 90 percent is muslim kazakhstan on the other hand is a lot of uh, different uh, religions still because yeah. kazakhstan is on the border with russian federation so a lot of russians still live in kazakhstan because it's a big country and still people like from russia go there and there some have families back and forth so they're like mixed uh, with christians and kind of some muslims so yeah. it's like a different types of like a lot of mixed families uh, Russian Christian, I mean Christian Orthodox was Muslims, so it's like right. uh, a lot of different influences. So that's just the difference. And differences, Kazakhstan is much bigger. <laughs> it's, a, it's actually it's a if you guys look at the map and see how Kazakhstan is, how big it is, and in, in a like space, like not space, like land mass or whatever, yeah. like the land area, you will see the difference between Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. It's like much. Kazakhstan is, is bigger. Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan's where Borat was from. They actually claimed uh, that, but you know, they made uh, Sasha Baron Cohen got so much negativity after that movie because people of Kazakhstan actually complained that uh, he was making fun of them. And this was actually not even showing their tradition because they're completely different. He yeah. was actually, that was actually the part of that movie was shot in Romania. Uh, actually, on the border was Moldova. That's where they shot it. Yeah. And Ka Kazakh people were like, "What the hell is he doing? They're not, <laughs> even, it's not even completely, completely different people." Because Romanians are like Moldova is was used to be part of Romania, so like they are completely different people. They are Christians. They're not Muslims, so they're like, you know, what the hell is going on? <laughs> so much you knew, huh? And, I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the, that's what happens when you learn culture through Borat, right? <laughs> man, Borat, uh, Borat culture is uh, is kind of uh, one of the movies that came out back in the day and kind of took it by storm because yeah, of culture, his not Borat. Yeah, comedic yeah. comedic talent. Sasha Baron Cohen has a good comedy talent. That's why he kind of pulled it off, even though it was a little bit dirty movie. I would say a lot of a lot of stuff which was kind of. Uh, very questionable in both movies, but he's very, <laughs> he, is, he doesn't care. He actually doesn't care. He's like that. Yeah. So he kind of decided that movie, second part was not good, but uh, second part, a lot of people got confused because the girl in the second part has a Russian last name and the la Russian name. And they actually didn't realize until later on that she was not Russian. She was Bulgarian. Oh, wow. 
And Bulgarian people have the same exact names as Russians along with the same last names. So same oh, wow. exact. You will not be able to tell like if it's a Russian girl or boy or it's a Bulgarian because they have same exact names and last names, but they don't speak Russian. They're Bulgarian, oh, wow. same, similar to Romania. Because a lot of people don't understand why Romanian people don't speak Russian. Some of them do. Uh, some Polish people do also. If you go to Poland, some 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 people in Poland speak Russian. So it's like a lot of uh, different, uh, I would say, uh, people living in different places who have a lot of different roots in yes. Eastern Eastern Europe. So you're going to remember uh, now, John, right? He's yeah. Uzbekistan. Um, Uzbekistan. 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 Yeah, thank you. It doesn't matter that much. <laughs> I lived in this country more than I lived there, but still, I mean, I still remember a lot of stuff. It was a great country. I mean, before. Yeah, he's a newsie. Yeah, he's a newsie. Hey, Roman, a Jill and Krillin both threw us some stripper cash. We're yeah, about so, ready to go. Uh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm way behind again, as usual. Um, I really apologize to everyone. We, we have such great uh, crowd in the chat always, guys. I really appreciate you all, guys. Uh, Bobby said the Romanian friend had to give Kent cigarettes to duck. Uh, Bobby, <laughs> appreciate it, man. Uh, Bobby has a lot of different friends in New York, guys, from different parts of the world. So Bobby was a lot of knowledge, as you guys know also. Old school, original gangster, without a YouTube channel. <laughs> I think Bobby is the only one guy who didn't make any YouTube channels. He's just doing his reselling all, all the time and doesn't care about YouTube too much. <laughs> about YouTube money. <laughs> and let me say hello to B Picking in the house. Anthony Dragon Master Finds in the house. Anthony, welcome. I try to sub to everyone I can because learn different things from everyone. So there right. you go. Jill, I really appreciate that our good friends, Jill and Ken uh, from Ohio, guys, from Marion. And <laughs> Man is text Monday's text day have to spend before I rest. Like, that's actually a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah. And it's not she can't write it off for entertainment. I mean no. Yeah, that's, that's I really appreciate it. Jill actually, guys, and Ken, they are also doing their whatnot right now. They've done two shows, or maybe three already. I think they've done one. I missed I another three. one because I usually so there are so many things during the day that I do. I forget already what I'm doing. So, guys, I miss. <laughs> once again, I miss you. What that? I apologize. So sometimes, you know, guys, there are so many YouTube channels, podcasts nowadays, whatnots, uh, deep dits, uh, districts. There are so many things going in the reselling world that uh, you have to have like three heads to keep yeah. you like intact, like you know, to kind of write everything down where everything. What everyone is doing. I mean, that's like right, then you, your business suffers. You, you you watch too much content and you're not focused on the business, right? Yeah. That's Where's actually me? that's me. Uh, rural ruler squirrel. <laughs> I finally pronounced it properly. Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen, actually, Kristen enjoys my uh, videos on Marco Polo. She loves them uh, because I go there and I tell her not to skip my videos. <laughs> she doesn't want to listen to me talk for like three hours. <laughs> yeah. I got to check out these swimming videos of yours. Yeah, man. Uh, ch check out uh, swimming. I don't, know which, I don't know which one it was, man, but uh, I hope it Marco wasn't a bad one. Ones. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Marco Polo ones, man. If I would start making Marco Polo videos on my YouTube channel, that yeah. would be something else to watch because Angie, Angela, perfectly blessed, uh, who are in our Marco Polo. We got Paul Philip Flipper in our Marco Polo. We got Kristen. We got Angela. We got Amanda Fireball Flippers. We got Nicola Presto. We got Jake, Yakov Benz, and mm -hmm. Anastasia. So we got like nine people right now. And Matt, bearded pocket tuber. So okay. we got nine people in our Marco Polo, and we kind of talk throughout the day. And Angela mentioned it today. <laughs> Yeah, it's an app on the phone. You can download an app and you can create your own Marco Polo. You, you can choose which people you want to let uh, in into your group. Uh -huh. And uh, our group right now is kind of where we kind of vote for, uh, like everyone has to vote for the person to get in okay. into our group. So it's okay. like uh, it's like based on everyone's, you know, agreement. Yeah. I didn't ask because I was scared of that group. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm surprised that they didn't throw me out yet. 
<laughs> with my bad behavior. <laughs> Because when I go, when I usually go, I try to, when I go to the bins, Goodwill bins, I take like sometimes they bring out like uh, books where and I take out a book, any book, and I try to read us in, in the Marco Polo. Because <laughs> I have nothing better to do. And so that's that's something interesting. Larry, way out one in the house, guys. Larry, welcome. Some of my favorite people. Happy yeah, Saturday, Roman Lisa John. Uh, Larry, thanks for stopping by, man. Uh, Brian is saying, just pick it up, but watch out for broken glass and other sharp things. Yeah, yeah guys, I actually cut myself when Brian was uh, with oh. me at the bin, so that's normal. Oh, yeah. Brian, I cut myself again after uh, I went back and I cut myself again a couple days ago. So that's kind of regular occurrence. He refuses um, to buy those cop gloves. Yeah. Um, I actually have gloves. I just put them on. Sometimes I forget. Jenna, do you do you guys uh, go into your Goodwill bins in Vegas a lot? We tried one time. Well, I used to go all the time when I was sourcing questionable things, and uh, I had her go with me. And it was like a war zone. People like crashing into her with carts and stuff, and she would go again. Mm -hmm. So it's like I meet Archie down there and go to the bins every so often, but. It's just like I'm it's I'm just, looking at I'm looking at okay, dollar eighty nine a pound and okay, maybe I can sell this thing for twenty bucks, but do I do I really want to be spending the time going through all that when I could source other I have other avenues of sourcing. So it, it's it's tough to even even like my yard sales, like it's it's kind of hard to get up for yard sales when I'm sourcing so well in my other avenues, it's like do I wanna sit spend the same kind of money? and get less you know and sometimes that that happens today was good but um bins is kind of like the last place yeah I go bins to. is all for for us i mean sure in different areas it might be different or even you know people that do we have a lot of um a lot of resellers out in vegas and they seem to be able to find what we don't have very much knowledge on um you know, we're, we're not clothing sellers. We don't sell books. Um, so those, the resellers that are in Vegas, they find those things. But for me, it's just the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Someone you know, said that before. Someone did. That's, that's, a, that's an interesting, that's an interesting that's comment. An interesting. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's a good phrase. But John will memorize it now and will repeat it to you. <laughs> every, every five minutes <laughs> guys and i apologize archie biscuit bot is currently lurking he cannot uh, stop by today because he's busy delivering door death. so oh. he apologized in advance guys archie is uh i would say one of the best supporters out there on youtube he actually comes in throws links puts out yesterday we went to alex bearded king picker yeah. uh, whatnot and supported him even though, like, you know, sometimes you would, I, I actually, Archie will send me someone's, like, link to whatnot, and I will only see it after, like, two hours. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I thought the door yes. was uh, my Instagram. He's, he's good at making sure everyone knows. And, and, and we appreciate that. Because, yeah. you know, you get caught up with watching this or, you know, cleaning that or listing or anything with the business. And you don't get to, you know, some of your friends are are doing a whatnot show or they're doing a, a live and you're just like, oh, I didn't I had no idea, you know, so it's fun to to have Archie have our back. <laughs> yeah. And Archie, you guys, uh, how did you originally what was your uh, I would say who was your influencer on YouTube originally before you started your own YouTube? I mean. Do I have to admit it? Uh, I mean, I kind of, it, it's, it, well, you know, it's okay. You had the, uh, okay, I'll say this. You had uh, your rock star flippers, you had your Lindy Glens, you had, this is back in 2018. Yeah. Um, you know, 10K by the Bay, which turned into um, uh, Mr. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chris Lynn. And, um, you know, those, people had decent information, you know, and, and until they didn't. And until they started, they, didn't. they started, changing a little bit about that time and um kind of turned me off but that's that's kind of who i started watching you know then 
you know, you have your franchise kicks, watch the, you know, the unboxing videos and watch the, just a lot of different, different folks, you know? Yeah. Mine was, um, what's the, I can't think of a name right now that they're a couple in Florida. They come out here and visit. Oh, you, you, you're talking about, uh, um, rally roots. Rally roots. Rally roots yeah. yeah. Yeah, rally roots. Rally roots uh, are actually I like. Uh, their I, I like rally roots. You know, I. Well, I don't dislike them. I mean, they were yeah. they were on the rotation. I mean, it's kind of hard to, to to speak to everyone. I mean, bearded picker. I was watching you know his yeah. stuff back then. So you know, yeah. it's it just it's funny because you're you're watching YouTube videos and they they throw new people at you. You know, mm -hmm. and you know yeah. at the time you just eating up all the information. Now it's like. I don't have, I really don't have the mental capacity to get things done and focus on all these videos. So I, I just try to, you know, put on a long like live stream and have it play in the background so that I can just focus on the work. Yeah. And that's true. A lot of, you're absolutely right, John, is that a lot of the time, and I'm trying, you know, like, because you guys know how I am, I try to uh, go into a lot of different lives all the time, especially the ones that I'm subscribed to. Uh, channels that I'm subscribed to and I try to go in on, on almost every life and try to kind of joke around sometimes <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean it, yeah and uh, I would I would say like John is right about it sometimes it turns your attention away from doing your own business because you're involved in like so many different things on YouTube and you're like uh, lose your own kind of uh, timing on uh, what you need to do to make money that's what kind of i am always kind of uh, admit to myself that i sometimes go in I, and i'm addicted to this kind of stuff and when i turn it like when i don't watch anything i'm very productive mm -hmm. i like will list a lot of stuff i will do a lot of things but as soon as i start watching what not youtube lives videos that's it i'm like completely like my attention completely yeah. turns away and i don't do anything I just right. will watch. I will watch YouTube. I will watch lives. Uh, participate in the chat, and that's basically my kind of things that I like to do. But it kind of yeah. hurts me also at the same time because I just spend uh, valuable time on uh, basically not making money during the time. And uh, J uh, Andy Sometta actually pointed out something here. Uh, so shout out, shout out to Global Voodoo, uh, guys. If you remember who Global Voodoo is. <laughs> And Andy, actually, here you go, guys. Shout out Global Voodoo, Mike. <laughs> uh, Andy was actually right uh, about Global Voodoo be being, I think, one of the first uh, YouTube reselling channels back in the day. So he's not doing it anymore, I think. He does it sometimes. Yeah, and uh, uh, I don't know if you guys ever watched his content. I did. Actually, surprisingly, I always forget about his channel when I mention some channels. But Global Voodoo, Mike. Actually, back in the day, resellers who didn't have any channels yet, some of them watched him. So yeah. I don't know if uh, a lot of them watched, but uh, it is what it is. And uh, Andy saying Roman helped me get a job at the Russian prison with his cooking videos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no problem, man. Uh, all, all I can do for you, Andy, I, I can. I'll, I'll, I'll be here to help you, man. <laughs> And uh, Anthony is saying, I agree. I thought it was so disrespectful when people were doing that on one of Dave's last videos because he had his wife and friend as a focus. Like they did great. Keep your negativity to yourself. Yeah. That's actually absolutely right. That's Which absolutely Dave? true. Which okay. Dave is he talking about? Um, I, it, yeah. The, okay. okay. Uh, and Tommy is saying, I call FedEx daily begging them to lose Roman's packages. I love the 12 hour phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually cool. man, they, can't, they haven't done it since then believe me i think i think they probably don't want to mess around with me i no think more. they learned their lesson because <laughs> I, I think they didn't want to for me to call them and start screaming at them again you know so you guys you guys, <laughs> you guys don't do the right man you know where it comes from john i used to work <laughs> at a computer company and i used to do uh, uh customer service like uh rma return yeah. merchandise type of stuff people will buy something they'll return it and yeah. sometimes i had to like you know call other businesses like yeah. companies who are uh, manufacturers to get a replacement with rma and a lot of the times when i used to be in like in verbal 
confrontation. That's why this already kind of my experience from dealing with customer service, people who called about broken computers or laptops, and I would try to help them uh, over the phone to fix it. Yeah. And man, it it just got to me eventually. I was so good at it that I I mean <laughs> I I was the best man with customer service. They actually when I quit, I said my mental state became more important to me because I couldn't take it anymore, man. Because I had like uh, they, we were selling so many computers that uh, there were a bunch of different customer support people, but I had to deal with a lot of more serious cases. And those more serious cases, man. <laughs> well, just know this. Just know this that that uh, you know I I, I kind of make fun of the the accent, the dialect, you know. But it's out of love, you know. It's 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 uh, we you know without you wouldn't be Roman without that. So don't change no. it. No. no, man. I I will try to lose my accent tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> He's that's gonna it. drop it off at the bins. Guys, that's it. I'm I'm losing my accent tomorrow, and that's it. I quit again. I quit the live YouTube as usual. And, you know, we have to give Lissa some props because she puts up with him every live. And, you know. And then there's after the show. And then there's yeah. after the show. When the camera's not on. <laughs> yeah, guess when the camera is not on, uh, Lisa is screaming at me all the time, like cursing yeah. at me. And I have to hide and I don't show up next time. Yeah, y'all. We'll just let it out. He's yeah. my, my secret work husband. Yeah, so. <laughs> secret, you know secret, how that guys, secret yeah. husband. See, secret husband. That's the uh, most important. That's why I, need to work I needed my again. green card. <laughs> yes, that's it. That's and, it. Yeah, that, that's one of the reasons, guys. See, uh, Lisa actually that's just one. arrived in this country recently, so she needs a green card. <laughs> so if anyone a Russian mail order bride. I've I've mastered fixing the accent, but I can't get him to be more American. <laughs> you know, hey, sometimes switching roles isn't so bad. Hey yeah. now, no, it's getting late. You're gonna, you'll get it going. <laughs> no. Yes, we we I I I I cannot pour out like so many times on the same day. <laughs> Guys, I already put out today, and I have to do it again. It's difficult, guys. I have to after the life, I have to get some rest. Because I usually have, it take, guys, it takes me time to put out. I have to, it takes an hour. So like I, yeah, I usually go, it's a usually hour long sessions, guys. I, I recommend, I recommend guys to have one hour long session. That way, it's more enjoyable. It was an hour when they were eighteen. If you're gonna lie, make it believable. Man, try your best, guys. I know it's difficult, but try your best. Women actually enjoy it. So don't don't get me started on that, guys, because it's not going to end right with uh, our great guest, guys. So, uh, John, uh, what what would you say? I know you mentioned in the past you were buying previously from B Stock Supply, because I used to buy from them. Yes. <laughs> How yes. was your experience with B Stock Supply as well, a supplier? Experience is actually good. I bought a Costco pallet. Uh, I think I, I paid like five or six thousand. That's including shipping from Tennessee, I think one of the facilities out there, Tennessee. And it was full of Sony, uh, the, the high end uh, wireless Bluetooth headsets uh, or uh, headphones. Headphones. And like 80% of the product was just that. And it was in. It was, you know, with Costco, it's a lot different than other liquidation. It's like they, their employees package everything nicely. Uh, you could tell it's repackaged, but it's really in good condition. And I mean, I was ranting and raving about it. I made a video unboxing it, which is my biggest mistake because I couldn't buy a pallet again after that, after that video was released. Uh, yeah. So I, I learned not to discuss your sources at all. Um, I mean, I lost a lot of money by just putting that video out and revealing that information. So yeah. I, I would like to say it was a good experience until I couldn't experience it again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, but that, I, me too, man. I used to buy from them a little bit. I bought some Radio Shack. When Radio Shack well, went out of business, I bought some pellets of Radio Shack stuff. And it was like cheap because Radio Shack, uh, most of their stuff, if you remember, a lot of stuff which was electronical type of components electric components fuses capacitors all the stuff like cables like uh, power cables different adapters for everything and i i bought like uh, four pellets 
and I remember BSTAC had it listed as new. Mm -hmm. Nothing was basically they had a listing as new. But when I got it, uh, because I, if you remember, BSTAC only took wire. Uh, you had to pay him with a wire transfer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know maybe you guys did the same. I maybe, but I did this. I I remember it. They only took wire transfer. Yeah. So I had to go to the bank and send the money from the bank, mm -hmm. and uh, then they ship you the pellets. And I got them, and it was not new. Like all of it was like some of it was new open box. Uh, some packages were like missing from stuff. Some stuff was laying around. So do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the first time you saw it. No, um, I we we bought. Don't buy from the B stock. So B stock has a list of marketplaces within its website. So you stick to the Costco's, the Walmart's, the Home Depot's. You should be okay because a lot of it's manifested. But if you venture to the B stock where they have third party sellers selling pallets, it's be very careful. I bought a pallet. It looked like it was it was one of those Gaylords, and it was full of phone cases, right? Like iPhone five and six. This is like back in two thousand and eighteen. Terrible. And we were in California, but I noticed that on the top there is an um, there is an iMac computer. There was uh, I could see three iPads, and I'm like, well, that's just on the top. What else is in, in this pallet? So we bought it for like fifteen hundred plus shipping. It got here and all those devices were, were there, but they didn't work and there were none, nothing else on the bottom. So they, they, they strategically laid everything out to where it looked better than what you're getting. Yeah. And it was bad. I mean, the stuff was it bad. It was real bad. I even tried to give it to the kids to sell. Yeah, he, we, we even tried to give it to Tyler, you know, our son. And he's like, at first he tried and he's like, this stuff is crap. It's absolute crap. <laughs> so it all. we we ended up chucking all of it before yeah. we moved away. Um, it, was, it wasn't worth California. It. It wasn't so. worth it. So yeah, be very careful. Um, you know, a lot of those like Costco's good. They have some other ones where they they have like a policy where it's like a certain percentage, and they do work with you. So it just that there's too many people on there now, and and in some cases, like if the the palette is like all Apple stuff, I don't know how. Or, or why this happens, but MSRP might be 20,000 on this pallet and people are, are bidding like 18,000. Like yeah, it feels up. Like, yeah. Open yeah. box. It doesn't make sense. So yeah, yeah be careful guys. I, it's actually absolutely, absolutely right. That stuff, they kind of trick you. Yes. And they are relying on those uh, people who are trying to, guys, they not, they, they don't even know exactly yeah. what they're buying specifically. But yeah. they're going to beat up. They probably have their own bidders who beat up stuff also. For yeah. Like do shoe bidding type of situation and those type of pellets. Because I've seen, because I'm still, I don't buy from this stock supply directly anymore. But I used to, not just with like uh, uh, Radio Shack, I bought some cell phone accessories back in the day also. Like a bunch of like, I would say like I was buying pellets of that stuff, cases for different phones. Uh, batteries and stuff like that screen protectors so it's like dangerous and you get the stuff that most likely will be either missing boxes or broken or open box laying around so mm -hmm. just yeah. uh, be, be careful guys and uh, you'll be okay you got Kathleen Gimple in the house compression yes I had to make the decision for my mom too uh my mom had complications from bypass during COVID it was rough uh, yeah the, sorry about that uh, yeah that's tough and BP can appreciate it very much. Um, uh, sorry for your loss. Uh, appreciate it. And Maya appreciate it. Um, and uh, Bobby is saying all night. Or sorry, Bobby, not all night. Or we have a lot of stuff to do. People are busy, man. I know that you're one of the. <laughs> Bobby is one of those resellers, guys, that actually does a lot of stuff and do, does listing a lot, does his uh, reselling, concentrate on reselling. But uh, he's a good dude. If you guys remember when he was doing lives with Mike, uh, uh, flipping goodies recently. I haven't seen Mike. Bobby, what happened to Mike? <laughs> well, we haven't seen him. And Maya saying, I remember we couldn't even get tests. Yeah, that's true. That was tough times, guys. And yeah. uh, a lot of people lost their loved ones, unfortunately. So yeah. it is what it is, guys. So, uh, John and Jenna, what was your, before we end today's live, what was your best sales this week? 
my best sale, I sold a Buffalo. It's a Buffalo. Um, if I can get it here real quick, just so I can tell you what it was. It's the uh, the thing with the hard drives. Um, it's a backup power supply. Not a power supply, but a uh, cloud backup. Let me actually go to it. I sold it for 300 bucks. It's a Buffalo Terra Station. Oh. Two bay NAS 16 terabit. So it had two 8 terabit hard drives in it. And it was open box. And it was like brand new. And I couldn't find any comps for it because uh, the Buffalo Terra Stations that they had sold recently were like the four terabits for like eight uh, terabits total and i'm like yeah so i overpriced it like 399 and i backed it down after a couple weeks to 349 some guy offered me 280 plus shipping so i'm like all right i'm only i was only into it for what 13 13 dollars and 80 cents is what i was into it for right. so and that was you, where did you find it uh where i buy my liquidation okay see that's a secret that's a secret <laughs> Guys, I bought it on B stock. <laughs> so guys, uh, go to, there now and get one. Uh, They're not going to fall for it twice, John. <laughs> John, I think, I think, uh, I hope it's not the same place where Tommy buys his shoes from. <laughs> no, no, not, it's not, not, guy. not the same supplier, man. <laughs> not <that guy. laughs> Nothing against Tommy's supplier, guys. You know, you know how it is, but um. It is uh, great, man. Those actually do sell, guys. I sell them too on another account. I sell a lot of uh, par computer parts and hard drives. So those yeah, types yeah. of storages, guys. Buffalo, Lacey is another brand, which is really good. Uh, mm -hmm. And Western Digital Seagate. And there are a bunch of other ones, by the way, that make NAS, network attached storages, and they contain a lot of capacity. And those yes. actually move very good, guys. A lot of companies buy them so be on the lookout and if you find them pick them up guys mm -hmm. it's very important that's one of the uh, i think in my opinion sales through rate is also really good on those so um so before we end today guys i decided uh, john and jenna will do their end monologue and uh like they do on their life so that's going to be great end to a great thing to finish our life today well so, i'm only going to say this that uh if i can Say anything about reselling today that really got me fired up it's the number of people out there that are pretty much out there just trying to get their garage cleared and make some money um talking hundreds of yard sales out here in vegas now i realize you guys are probably out in different locations and don't have that many but there's people out there that are eager to give their stuff away we came across a lot of places that had free, free on their and it was halfway decent stuff but it's like no, you know, and, and so there's just so many people out there that need money that are giving their stuff away, um, not giving it away, but at Plus. pretty good prices. Yeah. And it's time to get out there, even if you don't you do yard sales and maybe you're looking for other ways to source, get out there, get the stuff. But figuring all that out is yet another example of how flipping ain't easy, right? That's there you right. go. Well, I'll I'll let don't you have a sign on the back, guys. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well i thank you so much for having us tonight yeah. i know um we we look forward to saturday nights watching you guys and and being entertained usually see it's past our dinner time now so yeah. <laughs> so we usually are eating dinner when when you guys are live but you know we we enjoy every the community is where we thrive and having people that can relate to what we do because let's be honest our families have no idea what we're, we're doing and how we do it and how we pay our bills and you know all the things mm -hmm. but having people like you guys you know it, it makes it all worth it in the end because you can only make so much money you know that's not gonna really i mean of course it's nice to have money but but the community is really what brings us all together. And, and I think that's the best part of it. I appreciate it, guys, very much. It was really yeah. fun. Uh, unfortunately, guys, we couldn't ask John and Jen a lot of questions because we're going to be here all night. So I apologize, <laughs> apologize, apologize for that, guys. And uh, really, it was very nice of, uh, for me to meet you guys in Cincinnati. It was a great yeah. time. We yeah. talked and danced and had a great time. And I just—they're great dinner partners. Yes, I mean, they were 
Yes. You guys got to come out to Vegas. I hear a lot of people like to come out here. Yeah. I've yeah, heard that rumor. Yeah. Anthony, Anthony Dragon Master finds appreciate uh, kind words, man. Uh, really means a lot. And uh, also, before we leave, last question, guys. For John and Jenna, do you guys ever plan to do any whatnot live sales? Mm. You know what? I, I, have, I, have, I have a whatnot account. I was like, I have signed up literally like two or three months after they started. Went through the whole onboarding and everything. And I'm like, what the hell am I going to sell? Yeah. You know, so at this time, probably not. I mean, I've made 200 bucks on whatnot. Uh, I, uh, at the time they had the promotion, like get someone to sell on whatnot. And once they sell something, you get 200 bucks. So I, I had Archie sign up under me mm -hmm. and he sold a bunch of uh, laser discs and they sent me my 200 bucks. <laughs> so I, that's crazy. I guess I'm winning on whatnot, even though I haven't sold anything yet. Yeah. But probably got, not. Got a, not got Archie. <laughs> probably yeah. not. Our stuff is. You know, it's too big. It's too bulky. It's, it's. We just, have things that we could sell I mean, if we wanted we could, to. But. If we wanted to, we could make it work. But I just, I really, I really feel that eBay is our bread and butter, and we have to really nurture it the best we can. So. Yeah. Okay, guys. Before we end today, I'll show one bolo for the reselling community because most likely a lot of lurkers today. So most of you will probably rewatch this live, hopefully, and help us out with views. <laughs> but I found this device, guys, and I am not even sure what it is. That's the Goodwill Beans today. This is a Rolly light pad block. It some makes like uh, some kind of lights. It lights up like this. I don't know if you see it. Like a light but, bright. Um, it looks like a battery. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, guys. It's some kind of, uh, some kind of a, uh, I don't know, contraption. <laughs> Some kind of contraption, guys. Oh, it's, still... it's a contraption. Well, how much does it sell for? Brand new one sells for around one hundred fifty dollars. Uh, used one sells. That's not for... brand new. What's the what's the uh, used light pad block? Uh, it's called uh, Rolly light head uh, light light pad block, and I'll show you. Let's share the screen, guys, so you'll see what I'm talking about. If John and Jenna don't mind. Uh, and can I'm stick around for, for five more minutes, guys. So I'll show yeah. you. Let me share the screen, guys. And I'll show you the, what it is. Uh, like I said, I, I first time I see this kind of stuff. So here is a list that comes for it. If you see it, uh, there is one that are listed. New ones for 109. Used one for 89, 99, 11 watchers. 100. And let's do so. So, so currently 32 <laughs> listed right now and let's see how many sold guys re re reveal time 47 reveal. sold uh brand new for 109 pre-owned 79.99 there you Open go box, 65 109 69 81. i've never but, even heard of it yeah 89 right here again pre-owned um so 149 i don't know maybe that's a different model i have to research it this is the one i have similar to mine 69 um this one 99 brand new this one is open box 94 so this one 90 is like the one i have see it lo looks like some kind of um some kind of i don't know what it is guys i, I have to it's some well, kind of have to update us and let us know how it how that yeah. that goes yeah but it's a good it's a good product guys so if you see it somewhere and i just wanted to share it to the community to help everyone out, hopefully it was useful, guys. For if you, our business too. like yours, we'd go, we'd go more often. Yeah. I mean, you have like you had like three people at your. Business I know. I literally got hit with a cart. Some lady literally rammed me with a cart at the bins, and I was ready to fight. And I was like, "Nope, let's back it up." I went and sat on the side and just waited for him because I was I was so heated. Because, I mean, and she didn't even care. She had no. Oh, no. She didn't even say sorry. Didn't even look away from the bin. I was so upset. I saw yeah, but, uh, it happens. I, I can tell you, Jenna, in our bins, uh, as you guys saw from one of the shorts, of course, that there are no people. But in reality, there are a lot of people. They just kind of, I mentioned in the yeah. live also before, some of those uh, resellers, they either come in, then they leave for like, like say, 30 minutes before the new rotation. And then they come back. So they just sit inside their cars or eat yeah. or talk on the phone. 
and then they just know like every 30 minutes usually they will rotate the bin so they will just come out come back and there are more people so they, every time there's more people like today yeah. for example when i came in there were a bunch of people but then during the day since it's saturday it was nice weather outside a lot of people have uh, resellers have left and yeah. uh, there were few left and at that time i still stay because if i'm gonna stay i may find more stuff so like i kind of take it as an opportunity you know so um but it yeah, is what our, it is uh, ours is just a very small building it's mm -hmm. super tiny in there and it's just it's too cluttered and i i just i can't i can't be bothered <laughs> yeah. not for everyone it's not for everyone i guess <laughs> yeah and last question we're gonna answer for maya koyama did anyone see the article about the person who returned the 20 year old tv to Costco? wonder if that will end up on the pill yeah wow. yeah there's been times like uh the two costco pallets we did buy um they had a couple items that were on the manifest that were no longer you could no longer find like when you do like a google search the the this the upc didn't come up so it it told us it was probably something someone had for like five or ten years and they finally turned it back into costco hmm. so that's crazy happens. yeah that's, that's uh, <laughs> i remember i remember back in the day costco would be would have great return policy better yeah. than ebay and amazon yeah <laughs> you could return anything after like a hundred years back yep. them and they will take it back because that's how they are guys that's what brings a lot of customers back into their store their that's customer right. service guys anyway yeah. guys john and jenna once again i really appreciate it guys and please subscribe um once again i'll put um their channel in into the chat guys give them a sub if you haven't done so already and they're doing their lives on monday and friday at 6 p.m eastern time 3 p.m pacific time guys so please go into their life support them they got great crowd a lot of knowledge in there compared to our life it's like day and night so you can you can you can learn, you no. can learn a lot you can learn a lot guys and you guys are always fun interactions are very fun a lot of uh people coming in and joking around and there is a lot of serious stuff also so that's yeah. great and please subscribe to them guys uh and guys once again john john i really appreciate you guys inviting me to your life and i got subscribers uh with your help also i really appreciate it guys and everyone in the chat i really appreciate you guys stopping by and watching us supporting us uh sending us super chats it really means a lot to us guys so and uh, we'll see you next week guys our next week guest will be Kristen, thrifty mom and uh, we're gonna probably be earlier next week at 6 p.m but i'll talk to lisa about it because i gotta go somewhere next week oh. to my friend's wedding so uh most likely we, uh, it's not most likely it's gonna be 6 p.m eastern so are you going are you going there to object um <laughs> man, I, I, i'm not sure i just need to kind of chill out oh. <laughs> <laughs> with energy chill out with energy but anyway guys i appreciate it brian uh, thanks for visiting me in Cleveland once again. Hopefully you had a great solar eclipse here in Cleveland and uh, enjoyed it with your family. So take care. Have a good night. Have a great rest of your weekend, guys. We'll see you uh, Bye, next guys. Saturday. Thank and you. you'll see John and Jenna on Monday. All right, guys. You all come back.